Welcome to Lights, Camera, Barstool, episode 105. We have Jeff in, obviously, missed the last episode. We have Clemmer in, uh, because we are going to be doing a draft of the best movies from 2000, oh, where you said 2005 to 2009. That's right. Interesting one. Thank you for putting me in this nice chair. It's a great way to treat a guest. <laughs> put him most unco- Is it what you do with Ray Romano? You put him in a chair like this? He was in a very small chair. Yeah. Like this? This is so, he was in, yeah, he was in a good chair. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. This is the most uncomfortable the, I've ever been. These chairs eat you alive. These I'd rather be eaten alive than like this. This is like <laughs> it's, it's so well, uncomfortable. It's wobbly. It makes you look like you're like Jack, though. Yeah, you do look large. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very you're bizarre. Built, you're built like Victor Wimbignana. That's over there. Horrible. Wimbignana. We don't we didn't design the studio though, so it's not really our fault. Yeah. And also you can see the peeling off. Uh, uh, wallpaper in the back, it's, oh. dude. It's one of the people worst. People are gonna realize it's not real brick. Yeah, one of the worst oh, design no. studios ever. This made. is awful. And we have a mic over there that we can't use because the the desk is so loud. Like all the all the electronics here are so loud. It's incredible stuff. But anyway, we're on episode one hundred and five. Um, I forget, Clemmer. Do you watch? I know you watch Barry. Do you watch Succession? Uh, I've only watched the first season. Uh, I'm just way okay. behind. Yeah, you have it's a, a love, very good show. You have a love hate with Barry. I'm just I'm just disappointed. It is a love hate show. I just I, the first two seasons were so great. One of my favorite shows on TV, if not my favorite. And then I feel like the last it's just gotten dark and kind of weird. And three took a nosedive, I think. And then four has been a slog. Mm-hmm. It's been it's, rough. It's, Only two episodes left. It's weird because three, I think, is like it's a really good show, but it's just not Barry. Like if it was a, a season of a different television show, I'd be like, this is really good stuff. But it just doesn't feel the same at all as the first two seasons. And then this season, there's parts where you see the glimmer. Of those first two seasons, but then it goes back to like season three. Like that's where it's right sad. It's not funny. It's yeah. just not. Enter- it's, not, it's not entertaining. I don't know. But the only two episodes left. They have not been shown to critics. Mm-hmm. So I have some high hopes. Like we're going to see some major plot developments happen. Yeah. But yeah, I'm kind of. I don't know. I, I'm. But I'm optimistic. Mm-hmm. These next two episodes are going to be awesome. I'm telling myself that. Right. Anyway, that's Barry. We Jeff, you didn't have a chance to talk about Succession. That was one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, of the it was season. very good. The the I tweeted last night. The wasabi scene was very. <laughs> It's very funny. It's very, I don't want to spoil it for Clemmer. It's okay. No, feel free. I, I'm so behind. I'll... Yeah, yeah, it was it was a very good episode. They, Clemmer kind of looks like the guy afflicted by the wasabi. He does. He has a yeah, very... Wow. He he all, like that actor? Yeah. That, that, actor. Guy, that guy looks like every person who works like the crunch time of an election yeah. at, an, at a news like network. At Nate too. Silver or whatever. I mean, it was, it, was very, it was very spot on with how news networks work, and they did a really good job with it. It was... It was uh, it was it was really well done. It was fucked up. It was a fucked up episode. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was where you really remember that they all suck. Yeah. They're all huge pieces of shit. Um, the entire family. Yeah. I think I think it was misogynistic. This episode. <laughs> Why? Because the Shiv was the big loser. Dude, the Shiv stands are crumbling online. Dude, they're they crumbling. Are insane human beings. Absolutely insane. It is a weird show to have such like the Twitter fandoms for shows and movies. I mean, they've been around forever. But it's such a weird show for that to, to happen because it's a, it's like a corporate, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a corporate like news network show, dude. They, the the Not stand like stand Twitter has like, almost made me hate the show the way they talk they're, about it. They're awful. Yeah, I mean, but that I, yeah, that's the case for anything. Though, they're like, exactly. oh, I mean, in headcanon, uh, Roman is gay. I'm like. Wait, this is just not true. This man was beaten off to Jerry like yeah. three episodes ago. You, I mean, if Clemmer doesn't know what Jerry is, you just made it sound like he's more gay. Jerry is an older Jerry woman. Jerry with a G ends in yes. an I. Yes, yeah. She's a uh, Jerry, I, I know. Jerry's uh, in like the second episode. Yes, oh, true, yeah, true, true, I'm true. familiar with Jerry. the first. But if yeah, you try to say, first like, episode, right? this character's the, not gay, he jerks off to Jerry. The like, first, it makes it sound way more the, gay. The, the, the first, What's the um, deal with this? Why are yeah, you exactly. beating off to me? One of the first interactions with with. Roman and <laughs> oh, Jerry. Such a bad Jerry Seinfeld impression. It's a great <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld it impression. I met yeah. the man. He thanked me after a set once. <laughs> no way. Yeah. It took me a second to like think. <laughs> <laughs> Put me in a bad Jerry, make fun of my lovely impressions. This is a t- terrible way to treat a, a guest. <laughs> one of the, the tweets that I sent you guys, actually, Trill Bollins had sent to me, it was, it was one of the stand accounts going, Hey, friendly reminder if you're a straight man, you're not allowed to have an opinion on Shiv Roy or yeah. actions. Okay, thank you. And then a reply was, Better question is why are straight men, why are there straight men who know who Shiv Roy is? And the, the response is like, right, it doesn't sit right with me. Like straight men that don't know who Shiv Roy is, what are you talking? Why, about? Why do these straight mean, men know this prestige HBO show? That's yeah, so or weird. the characters involved. Like, is watching Succession a gay trait? That's like, so funny. It's a feminine. It's so feminine to watch Succession. But I'll say the first dinner, one of the first interaction with Jerry and Roman was in the second episode when they're in the hospital, and he says. He's talking. He's trying to like just like yuck it up with Jerry, 
And they hadn't, I clearly hadn't talked in a long time. Yeah. He's like, oh, like, like, yeah, how, how is the old ball and chain? He's like, right. he died. He died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, oh, fuck. What yeah. a great fucking show. Yeah, sad it's almost over. I'm kind of glad it's almost over. So you, yeah. two episodes of that left as well, right? Yeah. Because yes. both Succession and Barrier are ending the same it night. shouldn't have been running at the same times at night, by the way. It annoys the shit out of me. You know what else has two episodes left? Don't fucking end. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Yeah. Bad yeah. show. I stopped watching. <laughs> what did you say? 70-minute episode with no Ted Lasso? I was, I was like, man, this episode feels kind of slow. And then I clicked pause and then I... <laughs> Just look at it. It's 60 minutes left. Like, oh, I was geez. like, what the <laughs> that, fuck? Talk about a show that doesn't need to be that long. Mm-hmm. No. That, that's a show that just truly, the, the, it, it lost its way. Yeah. Uh, it, it bought in too much. The the be, Like, we mentioned, I've already, we've, I've literally said this word for word on the show already. That's a show that bought into its hype too much. Mm-hmm. And needed to just drown out the noise and just do what, it, and just kept doing what it did the first season. Because no one had any expectations. Uh, it kind of got to be a, a sweet, nice, charming show. And then it just it, it leaned way too heavily into the stuff that people liked. And it became very inauthentic. Mm-hmm. It it just doesn't feel genuine anymore. Those like PSA clips are so awkward. Yeah, it's it's just weird. Yeah. Like it, I, I I I rocked the bat. They said it's like this really positive show, and that kind of like turned me off. It just seemed like <laughs> it just it just didn't seem for me. And then and then I see it's really kind of yeah. spiraled into like you said, it kind of like this after school special mentality to it. Yeah, at least that's what I'm reading in the reviews. I don't know. I that's everything. It's, I've and seen. That, that's another show that had a, had a weird stand. Not not that the yes. like, like not to like all these all these male characters are gay. I want them to fuck on screens. Type of stands but like it did have a like the cult following of ted lasso became a weird thing too where you ever you ever see somebody talk about a show so much you're not even convinced they watch it Mm -hmm. you're like "Ah, like do you really like like not like do you get ted lasso i'm gonna get about it but you're like do you really watch ted lasso or do you just like to dress up with him at like a party like i like i like i don't they're just there's there's a weird culture around shows like that and the shows that don't buy into it and the shows that don't bend to fans or movies, Star Wars, great example, Rise of Skywalker, they typically stay solid. You know, they stay true to form. Ted Lasso, great example of that not being the case. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised with Bill Lawrence being the showrunner, too. Like, he has enough experience where you wouldn't think that he would. I, I'm pretty sure he stepped out of that room or got a lot more hands off this season to focus on shrinking. Okay. Which had a great first and season. And you're a big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. Is Bill or- so Bill Lawrence is Scrubs, right? Yep. Bill Lawrence so Scrubs, Cougar started, Town. Started with Spin City. Spin City. Scrubs, and I, I couldn't speak for Spin City, but Scrubs, they kind of flubbed the ending of they pretty, did. pretty bad. I agree with that. It was uh, like the last three seasons. Yeah. Just pretend that once Dave Franco shows his face. Dude, Scrubs, that's, was, was Scrubs, death spiral. Was yeah. Scrubs impacted negatively, though, by the writer's strike? Was that one of the shows that got hit hard? I can't remember, but they did switch networks, which yeah. was very strange. It was I might be wrong friend. on that. I, there was a moment in time when Zach Braff, I believe, was the highest paid TV actor per That's episode, disgusting. which is just like wild to think <laughs> That's about. That's disgusting. Dude, most- he, he had some hype around him. He was like the oh, next yeah. great comedic writer. and Yeah, Garden done- State. and he- <laughs> The most fucked scripted show was um, Heroes, I think. Yeah. Heroes got, got dinged the hardest from that got hurt, the really writer's hurt, yeah. Lost. None of those people did Lost, anything really again. Lost got hurt, but Lost like recovered, though, and still mm. at least like I think yeah. Lindelof got to do what he wanted to do in the end. Friday Night Lights is a great example. Yeah, yeah they, Friday Night Lights got, got hit hard. That second season is so bad, and that show is yeah. brilliant. I love seasons one, three, four, and five, but two is horrible. You know what movie yeah. got fucked the most? Famously. No. Uh, Quantum of Solace. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Right, yeah. that's like, that's the poster boy for... Writer strike movies wasn't wasn't like Daniel yeah. Craig on set like having to basically write his own it's, lines. It, it was yeah. really it was like a disaster. <laughs> that one's rough, yeah, bad uh, movie. But yeah, I think Scrubs is the one where I always think like that one was one of the worst sitcom endings. Where because they just like what a great show those first bunch of seasons, and then just like whoosh, Parks, down. Parks and Rec for me is the one. For, yeah, like their the last end? season's really weird. Ugh, gross. I hate so the time jump. This is returning yeah. Barry too. They jumped eight years in the future, and you're like, yeah. why, dude? I thought it was a dream sequence. I, was, at, I know. I was, I'm so disappointed it's not. I'm, yeah. I'm still kind of hoping it is. It's really weird. Yeah. Oh, Joe Biden, <laughs> sleep, sleepy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this episode is brought to you by Dave.com. 
If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up. With Dave, you can get your money sooner, so without worrying how much money you have to get throughout, yeah, all that money you need to get throughout the week. We've all been there. You get an unexpected medical expense or you get no fender bender. You don't have the money to pay for it immediately. Now Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Dave is the banking app that could help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash with Dave. No interest, late fees, or credit check. There's money to fill your tank. Finally, get your car repaired, catch up on your bills without having to wait for your next paycheck, and you can tackle the expenses that have been stressing you out. Millions have already downloaded the Dave app to get to the financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from the fu- or for or from the future you. Download the Dave app and from the app store right now and go to dave.com slash LCB, dave.com slash LCB, sign up for extra cash account, and you get $500 instantly for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees apply banking services provided by evolve bank and trust member of the fdic all right first up we have actually a decent amount of news today which is pretty cool uh the first being the new mission possible trailer um i really liked their first trailer a lot because like there's like all you hear is the music no dialogue really other than uh henry zerny talking in the background and um you see all the all the set pieces all that shit this one a lot more talking obviously uh was awesome just as cool as the first trailer in my opinion um i really like seeing the new cast members i'm really excited to see Haley atwell si morales like playing the i guess sort of uh, heavy for whoever the real bad guy is, which I assume is Henry Zerny, who's returning soon yeah. for the first time since the first uh, movie. And Shay Wiggum, who I love from everything HBO. Uh, super pumped for this movie. Big time. Yeah, it was a good trailer. I, I actually liked the first trailer more because they had no dialogue. Exactly. I don't know why like that really got me. But no, this the trailer was awesome. The the set pieces look incredible. All the stunts. Oh, I just... There's... Uh, this... If this is bad, I, it is as bummed out as I'll be about a movie in... I don't even know. There's no chance this is bad. since since Gangster Squad. Gangster no, I, <laughs> I, I, no, I don't think there's. I, I don't. No, I mean there is a chance it's bad. I guess there I is. Think, I think the floor is like average because even if the plot mm. doesn't make sense yeah. and the dialogue stinks, at the end of the day, the action sequences. Yeah, there are is. I be, guess there's a chance, yeah. mm-hmm. but I would be quite stunned if it's not really fucking good. It has a really high bar to clear from Mission Impossible Fallout. But I do like that it's connecting back to the first. Mm-hmm. I like that this is going to be a send off. There's going to be a finality to it that I think helps it a little bit. Where I think if this was kind of like, hey, we're starting another string of three movies, you'd be like, uh, all right, is, is this guy ever going to hang up the cleats? <laughs> like, is he, is he ever, <laughs> will the world ever stop ending for him? So I, I do like that they're going to do that. Um, I love I love the fencing scene that they keep showing in the trailers, too. Yeah. I like Kitridge being back is awesome. Yeah. Um, even though I, I did, I did like, oh, fencing's a callback to the first one. It's not. Uh, that, I was thinking of Die Another Day. Okay. Oh, there, yeah. Uh, the fencing scene in Die Another there Day. There is a callback, though. They're on the train. I think that's kind of yeah. They're fighting on yeah. top of the train. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Morales. Yeah. That seemed like a little bit of a nod to yeah, the, the Palma mission, the first so, one. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond excited. I didn't want to see any. They actually, the thing is, I don't think there's that much different from this trailer and the last one, except they're just dialogue. dialogue that's it, it kind of felt like the same shit. So, they're not really showing you much. Which is mm. which is awesome. I, I'm fired up. I like that one shot of Kittredge where he's wearing the tiny circular glasses and the gas yeah. bombs go off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking nuts! The Joker, baby. Same guy back to score it. The music yeah. is amazing in the last one. the The way they use Born just ball. the the Mission Impossible theme over and over again in different variations. That's why Fallout was so. That was a big reason why Fallout was so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I think I think the score has gotten better and better. Right. Yeah. For sure. That's I I like the first trailer too because that score that they like. It just kind of slowly builds, and that's how they did it in Fallout. Just slowly builds throughout the movie into like this big climax. Just to, to take that iconic song and just reuse it, and just just change it up the way the way it sounds, and it, it was they hadn't really done that in the previous ones, and that and that is a big reason why Fallout just so fucking. They get like the snare drums rolling in the last one. I think in, in the actual yep. theme, which was so cool. The the motorcycle sequence in yeah. this trailer when Cruz is on, the, and he's like he goes over this cliff, but even before the cliff, it's like a. A straightaway among like shrubs yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm watching. Obviously, we know he's gonna be okay. Like, the actor's okay, but even watching him, like, oh my god, it's, it's, yeah. if he wipes out here, he's dead. Yeah, it's he's he's insane. And he did that actual stunt like 20 times. Like it's crazy. I, it, it, yeah, that's the thing. That's what makes this uh, like a level above an action movie for me is the production value, obviously, but also just you don't know what Cruz is gonna do next. It's such a wild card. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's and there's stuff that you don't even. 
like there's scenes that you that you know going in that are going to be moments, but there's even stuff within the movie that once you see it with the music and everything, it becomes even better. The running scene in Fallout when he's when he's chasing Walker and he's like running yeah. across the top of that building and he just gets faster and faster and faster. He's like superhuman. I just watched the other day on the plane. It's that is and he shattered his ankle doing right. That in real and they life. kept yeah. that in. Yeah, I have to look away when he does that because you know he fucking really hurt himself. <laughs> You know how Ezra Miller said he watched like wild animals like cheetahs to learn how to mm. run and he looked goofy as fuck? He should have just watched Tom, Tom Cruise. Yeah, Tom Cruise I, I, has I, the perfect I running thought the other day. I actually thought about like when watching him run across the top of that building in Mission Impossible Fallout, you're like, he is a he's got like the textbook movie run. He's yeah. really good at it. The first time you see it, I think is the firm came out in like 93. I just did it for my, the box series, but like, that's the first time you see the extended, I think the real Tom Cruise run. Yeah. And now it's, it's not a Tom Cruise movie without Tom Cruise run. Exactly. He's one of the few guys that's just super dedicated to that. And I think part of this with the Macquarie run is become like, he's made that a point to like, let Cruise just go ballistic. Like that first scene in the first Macquarie movie was him on the side of the, the, the cargo plane, just like holding on. And that was in real life. Like him holding on by a wire as a fucking plane took off. Like, I love that they let him just go crazy because it adds to the authenticity of it. And you're like, you feel more invested. You absolutely do. It's it's terror. You you feel almost terrified watching yeah. it. It's wild. I, I'm really excited for this one. Quality yeah. of the villain will be very important. Yes, though. for sure. Solomon Lane was an awesome villain in the yeah. last two movies. Like a very, very good villain in the last two movies. August Walker, too, to an extent. He was, right, yeah. right. But that replacing that is going to be difficult. And that's my one thing. I'm not, like, concerned about it, but it's... Like, all right, that's kind of a wait. I'm concerned. I say Morales is like the guy from NYPD Blue. Like, well, we think of him as like the guy from Ozark. I think most, most I younger guess. people do. Imagine yeah. he's a great villain in Ozark. God, imagine if good. they had fucking uh, Dennis Franz. Dennis Franz. Dennis I mean, Franz and I kind of feel like that's what we're doing here a little bit. It's like, all <laughs> that'd be, right, that'd like, be Dennis Franz. Got Sipowitz <laughs> and his Hank Hill ass. Do you remember? Do you remember the Jeremy Renner app? No. Oh, oh you, you would have loved it. I had a Jeremy Renner had an app for a while. It was just a. It was like Jeremy Renner's social. And all it was was pictures of Jeremy Renner, and but you would make accounts, and then parody accounts started happening, and we all we had parody oh, accounts. Yeah. Who was yours? I think I, I had a Ben Affleck one for okay. a while, and a couple other ones. I I, I Dennis Franz. Oh, good for you. And I would comment, yeah. but you could you could boost your comments by buying like stars, stars. Yeah. And so we spent an unbelievable amount of money to boost our comments, and for a while I would be Dennis Franz, and I would comment on Jeremy Renner's posts. And just be like, hey, remember that one time we we shared uh, my buddy Landon yeah. was Bon yeah. Jovi, and we got to be like, hey, like like your sign up it. was always great from your friend Dennis Franz, <laughs> and, and then in parentheses NYPD. <laughs> Those are so. Much I miss the Renner app. Me too. They got to bring. He, yeah, he you had. A, I feel like you had a couple accounts. My favorite one. It wasn't me, but the Casey Anthony one always. Killed <laughs> yeah, that, she would always. Yes. Whoever did that account would boost herself right to the top. <laughs> be like, great pick, Jeremy. <laughs> And you see Casey Anthony <laughs> on top of every picture of Jeremy oh Renner. Oh, my God. Those are the days. Uh, I hope he's doing well. Mission Impossible. Um, yeah, I mean, he did it fucking 60 minutes as if he got like – he saved someone from a burning building. <laughs> he got ran over by a ski machine that he owned. Like, come on. He did save his nephew. He saved his nephew. That was cool. But yes. like, he did like the 60 minutes interview as if he was like, like on Disney or whatever, their version of it. And like, it's like, come on. Like, come on. We know we know what the deal is here. Uh, anyway, the next trailer was Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, oh man, I can't believe we're even talking about this. I know, Mike what do you Schmidt. Mean? A tra- this this goes beyond this goes beyond your era. We've been talking uh, about, about this, the video game. We've been talking about this movie since like oh sure. the movie. Well, I bet we talked about this in one of our first episodes of this, sh- this podcast ever. Yeah, my uh, Mike Schmidt, a troubled security guard, starts a nighttime job at Freddy's. Mike Schmidt, the Philly's yeah, third not basin? the Philly's third baseman. Okay. Uh, Faze Bear's Pizza, a once successful now generally abandoned family entertainment center, when he discovers that four animatronic mascots. Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie the Bunny, Chica the Chicken, and Foxy the Pirate Fox move and kill anyone that is there after midnight. It's from Blumhouse. Uh, Josh Hutcherson and Matthew Lillard are the two big names. I've never played the game ever, but I am so excited after watching that trailer. I watched our co you know I mean? play the game. Watch Glenny Balls play yeah. the game. I mean, we, we've we talked about this movie in news Years since ago. One of our first episodes, probably five years ago. It's been in development hell forever. So the fact that we are actually seeing a trailer now is cool. I mean, it looks cool. They they made a movie similar to this, but a significantly more comedic angle. What with the fuck is the name with Willy's uh, Nick Wonderland? Cage. Nick Cage. Yeah, yeah Willy's Wonderland. Wonderland. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I hope it's good. It's it's terrifying. Like it's a scary concept. I like I like could see Josh Hutcherson 
Dude, he's I great. Know. I haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> What's he? Where, uh, where has he been? Yeah, he was, he, Peter. Uh, he Peter. Did, <laughs> the last thing he was like was was the the mid, uh, music video for like the middle by DJ Snake. He did this very <laughs> like, funny series on Hulu. Um, fuck, well, I'm a Future Man. Yeah, Future oh, Man. Right, oh right, very right, right. funny show. We interviewed him for it. Yeah, right. we right? did it uh, in the first two seasons of a very funny. Se- now who do you think Future season? Man? Huh? Dude, did we interview? I don't him? think I don't think Hutcherson was in. I think we were going to interview one of the cast members of it. But then we ended up not doing it. Huh. Haley Joel Osment? Haley Joel Osment, I think you're right. Yeah, because okay. we definitely interviewed him. He's a, he's good. He was a good SNL host. Haley Joel? What? No. Josh Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Yeah. He's very funny. He's, he's got great very jobs. funny. I would highly recommend if you have Hulu watching uh, Future Man. This first season, this, there's an episode where they go, they're in the future, and they go to the James Cam- Cameron compound. And like it's just basically an oral history of James Cameron, like egotistical, crazy shit. Very funny. Very, very funny episode. All-time wardrobe and hair our hair and makeup change when they oh, yeah. cut his hair for catching fire. Oh yeah. Saved <laughs> saved the franchise. Uh but yeah, Terrell looks great. Um Blumhouse, I feel like they're they have a very hyper specific lane where they're like, we're gonna make horror movies that like, hey, they might be like the same level of like um, I don't know, low stumpiness, I would say, of like the really shitty ones, but they're nowhere near as shitty. They're usually at a higher quality level. And I really like that. About There's a big cult following and fan base. This yeah, game. my nine year old nephew loves it. Really? Yeah, like yeah, he thinks it's like um, he goes horror. Uh-huh. He he's been talking about Five Nights at Freddy's for years. Yeah, animatronics freak me the fuck out. From like, what I understand, that game like changed the indie landscape. Like every game since that came out has, in a way, tried to emulate it. Like it was a yeah, it's big a huge deal. Yeah. This is this is a big this is a big one. It seems like people like the trailer. It seems like fans do like it. Okay. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know anything. No, like Sonic situation. I wish I knew more about it. Damn. Honestly, we should we should go dressed up as dressed up as what was his name? Fozzie Bear, F- Faze Bear. I think they call it Foz Bear. Foz Bear, dude. Uh, it's gonna look like a furry convention dude. opening night. <laughs> there, people who have played the game are probably pissing their pants right now. I'm definitely pronouncing it like tor- horribly. Uh, but yeah, that's Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, they announced Disney announced that the whole season of Echo. It's going to drop on uh, November 28th. That's probably not a good sign. Or yeah. it could be. Yeah. Uh, or it could be them listening fine. Like it like there are there are certain things that that I think would benefit from being dropped all at once. Yeah. That I think people would like more if it was dropped together. Maya Lopez must face her past, reconnect with her Native American roots and embrace the meaning of family and community if she ever hopes to move forward. Uh Alakwa Cox, Zach McLarnan, Z- or Z- Zon McLarnan is the one big name I know from this, other than like Daredevil and uh, Kingpin with uh, Vincent D'Onofrio and Charlie Cox. Uh, Zon McLarnan is like a really, really good actor. If you've ever seen Fargo, he's really, really good in season two. He's in a, a couple other great shows as well, uh, Reservation Dogs included. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm not, this isn't a show where like it jumps off the page for me for Marvel, but it's. Like, sure, I, I'm down for any hero I've never heard of becoming huge because I'm, that's Iron Man to me. I'm more interested in this because it's dropping together. Yeah. Like, I, w- I will go watch it, like, pretty much right away now because I can just watch the whole thing. I think Loki, season one, needed to be week to week. I think that yeah. was mm-hmm. a good show for that. Good suspense. It had a good Mystery. arc every episode. I think Ms. Marvel was a better show that people gave you credit for. And I think it would have benefited from being dropped all at once. For sure. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are big Echo fans. I think you'd have to put a gun to my head for me to watch this. So somehow, <laughs> some sort of ransom. We'll also see how much Daredevil's involved. Yeah. They, they, they are, they're yeah. trying to tease it. Whether they're doing that to get people to watch or they're being genuine about it, I don't know. Him and uh, She-Hulk. <laughs> really, they, I mean, right. they put him in the fucking trailer. Forgot about that. I, I still think the best release, and Amazon figured this out, is do three. three yeah, there. drop the first three episodes and then go weekly after that. I think you're right about this, though, all at once. Like, these smaller shows like this, Miss Marvel, She Hulk, they could be dropped all your, at once. Your 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 stuff that is successful in this fran- in this franchise are things that come out and you see the whole thing at the same fucking time it comes out. I know mm-hmm. that's a, that's called a fucking movie, but like I don't think it hurts to try that. HBO has been copying the model too. I've noticed like recently they do like two episodes and then they'll give you the rest of the season week by week. I like two and three episodes. I think that's like the perfect way to do it. The White House Plumbers both. did that. I, or I watched I, it after the first Is that episode. worth watching? I think it is. I think if you liked Veep, it's worth watching. There's a lot of okay. Veep showrunners. There's right. a lot of funny Veep-like humor. And I like the last episode, but it's a little too – I'm a big Watergate guy. Mm. I love Watergate like docs and stories. I, I, I just – I love like You and Nixon had, had a head-to-head. 
I'm a big I'm a big Nixon guy. <laughs> I've heard that about you. You're, yeah, you're not love, surprised. I love Nixon. You're a big um, deep throat guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what a name. But I mean, I think the greatest movie, one of the top five greatest movies of all time is All the President's Men. Mm. Which hey, shout out to White House Plumbers. They got me to rewatch that movie the other day. But I I think it's a little too cartoony. It's a really it's like if if you have all the president's men here and then the movie Dick with uh, uh, Kirsten Dunst, Kirsten Dunst, <laughs> yeah. it's like White House Plumbers is like a little, it's like at times a little too close to. to I don't know what Woody Harrelson is doing as Howard Hunt. Like he's not, he's like doing like an alt universe Howard Hunt. The voice is so odd, and he's got I think he's got fake teeth in. It's just we. It's a little too cartoony, but I, there's a lot of funny humor. Like Ike Barinholtz is in it, very mm-hmm. funny in it. Um, so I, 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 I would suggest it if you liked Veep because there's some, but it's nowhere near as funny as but Veep. But it's a comedy first, right? It's definitely mm-hmm. a comedy first. Okay. Like for sure. And Thoreau is very good in his role too. I was trying to pick to decide uh, if I was going to watch that or Class of 09 and I ended up watching Mythic Quest on Apple TV Plus instead. Really like Mythic Quest. I also did watch Silo really is like also it. very good. Yeah. yeah. Silo is a, is a vibes. very good show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really like Silo. That was a good suggestion. Uh, um, but. I, there is there is a funny thing I know you would like. Mm. Uh, Liddy famously like is fascinated with Hitler, and they play that up. And Thoreau is very good at playing up like 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 liking Hitler but not being into Hitler. And it's a very yeah. funny thing. So they, I would suggest Plumbers, but it's like not for everyone. It's yeah. not. I thought it'd be better. It's a little too cartoony. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Echo Loki, uh, they dropped. They say it's going to start releasing October sixth. Very curious to see how they navigate the Jonathan Majors King shit. Um, but just, other than that, I'm still excited. You I see mean, this new news item, and this actually just I just this is what, what I was looking at my phone. Um, apparently Disney has told like everybody do not do not mention Jonathan Majors in any promotional material. Mm. Do not talk about him, like especially since now Quantumania is on Disney Plus. It says yeah. under no circumstances any article allowed to mention Jonathan Majors or his involvement in the film as King. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it seems like they are going to recast him. It's a matter of like how they do it. I mean, if they get a Wuji from Guardians Three, I think it would be incredible. I mean, I, I I think suspension of disbelief would be so so easy with him as Kang. You could you could play so it off. Simple. You could play it off as he's. Yeah, you could play it off to the high evolutionary is. Yeah, could, I, I could see it. It'd be cool. He was he's he's mean and menacing enough in the same way that Kang was. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Loki is probably or I think pretty easily the best. Uh, Marvel thing to drop on Disney Plus by like, by a pretty fair margin. So uh, I mean, it would suck if the involvement of Jonathan Majors lessened the impact of Loki season two. But I mean, I'm still pumped. I love. Yeah. Oh three. yeah. Very I'm, excited for that. And Hiddleston yeah. is just so fucking good in that role. Yeah. He's he fucking killed. Also, that. Owen Wilson in it just reminds me. Uh, you that, want to talk about paint? <laughs> paint. <laughs> we talked about that trailer when it came out. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Like Bob Ross movie. They, or whatever. <laughs> Owen Wilson did a Bob Ross movie. It's not about Bob Ross. Okay. But it is He's like Bob a Bob Ross. Ross guy. It's weird. It's like it's like a mean spirited. This is supposed to make you think it's Bob Ross. Uh, it sucks so much ass. It's so bad. Owen that? Wilson's so brilliant too. Like he, it's all, he it's co-wrote all, Royal Tenenbaums. He, he picks a lot of bad shit. It's I, a horrible. What was that? Movie. Sam Sam Hayek. Hayek. I was about to say Bliss. 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 Oh, so zero. Bad. I give it a zero out of one hundred. So oh my God. bad. It's it's a it's a it's. Bliss is so. I Prime. would actually suggest somebody watches Bliss. Like, if you like watching a lot of movies, good or bad, Bliss. I suggest. I can't suggest Paint. Like, mm. Paint's not even worth like a like a joke watch. It's so bland, so stupid, so mean spirited. It sucks and not in a funny way. Yeah. Well, I mean, the good thing is Owen Wilson is great in Loki. Whatever that's worth. Mobius mm. M. Mobius. I've I've watched just continuous a continuous streak of bad movies. Hypnotic was fucking Bad. terrible. The mother was horrible. Back to back JLO. Ben Wait, Affleck, what, yeah. you got to go see Blackberry. Blackberry weekend. was really Everybody's good. Saying yeah, Blackberry, Blackberry is apparently yeah. is really good. I, I'm going to try and see Blackberry. I got to see Fast too. Obviously. I'm seeing Sanctuary yeah. tomorrow night. Pretty pumped. Q&A afterwards with Margaret Qualley. You're, I, I, how could I guess you're a <laughs> okay. Margaret Qualley guy? What's your address? That's my question. Uh, the, uh, I already Black know Bear that. Rocks, though. <laughs> Blackberry rocks though. It's like... Uh, uh, the very much reduced social network in that it's like, here's very dramatized storylines. 
here's like the tech end of like what is making this work, but everything's like very digestible. Dialogue nowhere near in the same stratosphere, but just in structure. How is, how is uh, Glenn? He's awesome. He's playing like kind of like a variation of uh, Dennis from It's Always Sunny. Okay. But he's really, really good. And this is actually like the first role I think I really liked. But fucking what's his name? Um, Jay Baruchel. Jay Baruchel. Jay Baruchel. In. Hey, I'm Jay Baruchel. <laughs> I mean, that's a perfect impression. <laughs> I, the, the thing that sucks for Jay Baruchel is that I think I like him less because he's never been the funniest person in any movie he's been in. He's always been attached to movies with like iconic comedy actors and he's like the fifth most funny person in them because he's just buddies with Seth Rogen, which sucks for him, I guess. Although probably not really because. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd say that's money. probably pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, although the goon, I'll, I'll stand up for his performance in the goon. This is the end, funny. but he just kind of plays his douchey self. So yeah, he plays like, like a, just like the straight man, douchey version of himself. Yeah, so. yeah, he's, and then he's the straight man while everyone else is having a fun. He's time. putting undeclared on, on Fox. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm just not a Jay Baruchel guy. Uh, the he's, creator, he's skinny. You gotta like. I, I gotta, you know, I gotta. <laughs> got that's that's what. That's what. Well, I mean, uh, I gotta, you know, I gotta support the skinny guy. Well, how do you feel there. about um, Jared Fogle? He got skinny. I do not. No, I do not like Jared Fogle. Jared Fogle is a fake skinny. A. And the yeah, very fake skinny. <laughs> the uh, I mean, I'm like troubling like, past. So, J- yeah, Jared Fogel, no, he's troubling not real skinny. past. Troubling past. I think it's worse than troubling. Very troubling. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not real skinny. Jay Barish was a really skinny guy. Like, no, you got to see. I've seen pictures of Jared Fogel in prison. Now he's in rough shape. Oh really? Oh yeah. no. Well, like, well, uh, not oh like, yes, I guess. Yeah. Very, very, very skinny. Mm. Um, okay, the creator trailer described as a uh, post-apocalyptic thriller involving a future impacted by a war between humans and AI. Gareth Edwards' first movie since Rogue One. John David Washington. James that seems impossible. I, I know. It's crazy, which was like 2016. I was going to say like seven years ago? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Years ago. Gemma Chan, Ken Watanabe, Allison Janney, Ralph Innocent, uh Greg Fraser is the cinematographer on this, who's obviously been fucking crushing it lately. Um, this trailer looked fucking awesome yeah i think i'm super super in on the concept the visuals look incredible like on par with what with uh, rogue one which is what i think was my favorite part of rogue one which is the visual element of all the sci-fi shit uh very very into it apparently at CinemaCon, people went like nuts for it when they aired some shit from it uh so super in on the creator very in on it. yeah it looks very good i like the cast i like everyone involved yeah frazier has been great um did dune yep uh so i i yeah I, this, this was another one did the batman did a bunch right, of other shit, right. yeah. Is didn't this get, just didn't setting money on Batman. fire? Yeah. This movie is it? Is it like lighting money on fire? I'm not saying it looks fine. I, it's fine. Are, is people actually going to go see this? Uh, yeah. I don't think people will. I think it. There is a very real chance I that it does lose money because it's not yeah. attached. To, it's just like we've seen it time and time again now, where original IP just doesn't hit with audience. Yeah, and then they, they just, bitch about people doing remakes. Yeah, so like works. I could see this yeah. not making it because yeah. it very clearly it looks like it has a massive budget right that's, massive. What I was, that's my takeaway too and like i don't know if people are gonna rush us to go see alice and janney shoot an alien like I, I like what are we doing here a little bit like if i'm in the studio i'm like i don't know if this is the best use of my money i think it looks awesome but yeah no i think the concerns about whether or not it's profitable are yeah, actually, legitimate that's, that's legit yeah the more i'm thinking about it. i was like oh it obviously make money it's fucking big sci-fi epic why wouldn't it but then also you look at like blade runner 2049 or and that had a bigger else. cast i, I yeah. just i don't see a reason one. for or, you know, someone who's just kind of into sci-fi a little bit to go rush out and see this. And unless there's more, like, it looked interesting. I was just shocked when it said, like, oh, you know, only in theaters mm. at the end. I was like, oh, shit, this is going to lose a lot of money. I, I think I'm into it because, like, I love when, like, really creative sci-fi minds get a chance to do some crazy shit like that. Like, just yeah. watching the trailer, I was like, this is, like, District 9 com- combined with the good parts of Chappie combined with, like, iRobot, Terminator, all, like, all this shit going back and forth in the past, like... Uh, I like their, it. their initial marketing, you can tell they're going to lean heavy onto the Star Wars crowd. Yeah, for like, sure. The the initial poster doesn't look like it has anything to do with. It looks legit like with tattooing. the movie, but the the poster it looks like a Star Wars poster. Yeah, um, they very clearly in the they say from the creator of Rogue One, like yeah. it's they're leaning heavy into Which it. Just smart. Yeah, yeah, it is tied to some franchise. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's the creator. Is, are we also? Is this a make or break moment for John David Washington? Because I still have not decided if he can act or not. I think he's really good in the right roles. Like in the wrong ones, he's, he's not great. But yeah. like, I feel like there's never a movie where I watched it and I'm like, he's the worst part of this movie. Or like he. When he's but, the protagonist. <laughs> like but like Tenant, I think he's good in Tenant. He's, he's not good the, in spots. And then other spots, I'm like, when every time he was on screen with Robert Pattinson, I was like, I wish this was Robert Pattinson's movie instead. <laughs> I can see that. 
I don't know. I'm into. I like John David Washington, but also like even in that black and white fucking Sam Levinson movie, I think he was really good. Yeah, that was that that movie was movie itself was the twisted mind of Sam Levinson. Wacky. It was yeah. a COVID movie though. Right? He was good. I think the best yeah. COVID movie was the Chewetel Edgy of Four and Anne oh. Hathaway one. Is that the heist was it one? Called? No, it was, yeah, there was a heist. But was, what was the name? It was, it was called the like apartment? COVID or something. It's, yeah, <laughs> it was like, called like quarantine. Yeah, it was called like quarantine shit, or like, something. That, Fucking terrible. That one on HBO Max, I think. Real bad. Damn. Uh, and then the last thing we had a trailer that dropped this morning: uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, yeah. Uh, members of the Osagi tribe in the United States are murdered under mysterious circumstances in the 20s, uh, sparking a major FBI investigation involving J. Edgar Hoover. From what I could tell, not a lot of J. Edgar Hoover, which is good for Scorsese. Stay away f- far away as possible. And Leo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, Scorsese directing um, Leo, uh, Robert De Niro, Lily Gladstone, Jesse Plemons, John Lithgow, Brendan Fraser. Uh, I think this is like probably any reasonable person's like it's near the top of their most anticipated list by far. Uh, it's been in the works forever. I was looking at it and I blogged about Leo getting casted in 2018. Mm-hmm. Like it was it got hit bad by COVID. Um, but everyone I know that read the book that this is based on nonfiction book, they said it's like the greatest book that they've ever read. They're like, oh, it's so good. It's great. And then the fact they combine that with Scorsese, you look at like yeah. his visuals I, combined I, I, with the Old West. I'm into it, dude. I, I read the book. It is a good book. Best book ever. Calm down. It's From a non-fiction? fascinating story where it's like, how the fuck do people not know about this? Uh-huh. But yeah, I mean, the book's good. But yeah, no, not greatest book of all time. I'm interested to see what Scorsese does to kind of lighten it up. Mm. You know, make it can like it's very slow. Let me just say, like, what happened well, to the, them the is like three and a half hours. There's no single. There's no single moment or no single like action climax. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder how he's going to fit this into a movie. I know, but seeing him just like Leo, just looking at it, like, hey, oh, yeah. can you spot the wolf in this picture? Like, he's I'm doing, just, it, I'm he's doing his it. accent. I'm into it, man. I'm really into so it. It looks good. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's Marty. So I, like, I hope, I don't know. Like, it's one of those things where what do you, what do you say? You're going to be like, I don't know about this one. Like, it's Martin's where you just assume it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did, I'm so excited. I'm going to like have trouble sleeping the night before this comes out. Like, <laughs> what this was is the last project? Was the last project The Irishman? Yeah, right? Yeah. And I liked it more than I, I liked I like it more than most people did. I, 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 I think the Irishman will age pretty well. I, I think I think people got a little too dumpy about the the facial, yeah. the, the de aging uh, and the length, and yeah, I think the Irishman was awesome. That, it's didn't, great that didn't bother me. I thought it was just boring. Mm, to be the, honest, the scene sorry, like, wasn't, uh, sorry wasn't Scream, brother. I yeah. mean, dude, geez. Scream is all right. <laughs> it wasn't Barrera. Scream. I mean, Scream is an all time great. Loves Melissa Barrera more than anyone. He really, there. yeah. It was unbelievable. You said he'd cast her as Wonder Woman. I didn't say that, but Chris did. And I, th- I listen, not a bad pick. Nah, I like Scream. I'm sorry. I like Scream. I, I just don't get the Melissa Barrera hype. Just still do not understand it. Open your eyes. <laughs> just, yeah. I tell that to her, dude. She can't act with her eyes at all. Um, but yeah, that's Cozy Flower Moon. I think we're all, that's definitely a, a easily all top of our uh, most anticipated. So yes. super pumped for that. I haven't been this excited for a movie in like years, I think. I'm, what? I'm like, this I'm, really? I'm, yeah, I don't get excited for Echo or the fuck you guys talked about earlier. We're not. No one I, is. I know. No one is. But I'm saying some people. Are nobody going, oh, in I'm here excited for this. Nobody in here said they're excited for the streaming series Echo. You guys, uh, you guys seem like you were a little excited for it. Like, no, I, I said I like that they're dropping it all at once. I like if it never existed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Echo, like, that was your defense. Echo, I don't know. I just, I mean, I'm excited for this too, but I'm just surprised. Like, I feel like the like, same level of excited for Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, what was, are we doing? No, it was kind All of right. a ge- five. No, we're excited for this too. I just <laughs> said the the expectation with the Martin Scorsese movies, it's going to be great. Yes. I think there's a but that was, it was a genuine question. Like, what other movies have you been excited for the last five years? I, I was excited for Air, and that lived up to what I was excited for. I was I was amped up for that. Wow, one. that that one. I liked it a lot. I, what what I else? Borderline loved it. I'm, 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 this is genu- I'm not even razzing you. I'm just curious. Uh, I was really excited for the Batman that did not live up. I'm a big Batman fan. Boom. I thought it was fine. I did not not think it was the Poor greatest Batman, thing yeah. of all yeah, that's, time. That's fair. I, I like the Batman a lot, but I, I also for understand. I get that. I'm, I am really excited for The Flash. Mm-hmm. Like, when that comes out. That's another one I'm, I'm really excited for. It goes back to that Michael Keaton Batman stuff. Um... I'm trying to think what else came out last year that I was really amped up for that didn't live up to the hype. I feel like the Oscar movies last year were not particularly great. Um, Belfast is one that I was excited for that I loved. So that one like exceeded expectations. I'm trying to think of like the yeah. disappointing like experience too. I've had. But. I think you're a tough person though. Like, And this is actually a good idea for a draft. Would be like what movies you would sacrifice so the movies you would want to see would come out like sooner. Like how many movies you would like be like, hey, I'm going to dump the flash 
so that I can watch Kozo Flower Moon earlier or something like that. Like, if you could sacrifice these to see it earlier, I think uh, let's work that out later. Dude, I mean, two two of the ones this year are, are up there for me probably last 20 years. Hmm. Which are? Like, me as actual Dune and The New Mission Possible. All right. Though I will say Fallout was up there. Though Fallout was a, was a shorter run of being excited because I liked the other two Mission Possible movies before that. But it wasn't until the trailer came out where you're like, yo, this could be fucking crazy. The, the, and, now, fists. Yeah. and now, like, our anticipation for this New Mission Possible has been since the last one literally ended. Since we walked out of the theater. I was dressed up at Henry Cav- as Henry Cavill. In oh, the wow. theater for Mission Impossible. And that was five years, four years yeah. ago? Yeah. yeah. Well, t- 2017, I think. No, yeah. we were working here already. So 2018. So it was 18 or 19. Yeah. Oh, um, man. That so that's that's like, movie. that's as long, that's as long as anticipation. Because you could, I guess you could say Endgame and Infinity War, but that's yeah. kind of yeah. different because that's, it's, 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 that is a singular. Endgame was movie. insane. Endgame was insane because that was like, Infinity War landed on such a, or ended on such a, Cliffhanger. Yeah, waiting a whole year. I mean, check it. What's like? I guess let's hope that's the same thing with this Mission Impossible. Exactly. Hope it ends, and you're like, holy shit! I wish I had been more in, more excited for Top Gun too. Me too. Because I yeah. was I was amped, but like I wish I'd have been like. But there's a really a, fired up an for it element it, it of like reasonable like distrust, right? Where it's like yeah, everyone's true. like, oh, Top Gun, first Top Gun, greatest movie ever. It's like it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's not. I think, th- yeah, Maverick was so much better than the original. Yeah, <laughs> Maverick, 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 so much better. better. Yeah, Maverick, much better, movie. better. So I went into Maverick a little bit like, ah, we'll see what we got here. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Where, because the Top Gun, I think, is so overrated, the original. Dude, it's one of those things where it's just, it's Danger a cultural zone. moment. <laughs> yeah, it's like people are acting like it's the great. It's not. The it's first not. Top Gun's like a patriotic, like, kind of like propaganda, like yeah. a little bit, like cultural thing. And it's like, it's not actually a great movie. So, so uh, Force Awakens, I would say, is probably the most. Yeah, that's true. Anticipated of my life. Of your life? Yeah. Probably is. That was awesome. That first trailer was so unbelievable. So for, good. First of all, the the the, oh. the fake Bob Iger go shoot a couple random things for this teaser on Black <laughs> Friday teaser that came out a year a year and a month before the movie, where it was like that Kylo Ren scene where he ignites his lightsaber yeah, that yeah, never yeah. was in the movie. It was like shot for the trailer. Yeah. That was awesome. Uh and then the actual trailer of of like with like Han and yeah. like Reese says like like it's, it's true, all all true. It. that scene yeah. is so good that was in that it was trailer. Monday Night Football mm-hmm. um that that that'll I, that'll be kind of hard to top for I think most mm-hmm. people that was incredible I actually think for me it might have been the Batman my most anticipated that trailer was sick that was that really way because remember it came out before COVID at their first DC fandom yeah and that trailer came out of nowhere it was just him beating the fuck out of that guy yeah and they had the I'm justice right yeah I'm vengeance honestly Dark Knight yeah. Dark Knight's first trailer was so okay, yeah. fucking good so good that's yeah. that's on my that that one too list. like I remember walking into that theater very like not even like all right begins was cool let's see how this is like you're like uh and you had heard that Ledger was yeah. Yeah, so and then obviously Hangover Part Two. So mm-hmm. of course, yes, yes, that's <laughs> easily. Honest. I do remember sitting over Hangover Part Two, being like, "Yo, this first one was funny." No, <laughs> come on, really? You thought the Hangover Part the Two hangover was Part gonna... Two made a, an an unbelievable like a billion, amount of money? Billion dollars? Oh, it yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, but I don't remember being excited for it. Heat was might be my name. Me and all the homies sitting heat? heat. I don't think I've ever seen like, how when that, the hype around <laughs> Heat. I can't explain enough how big it was because you had Pacino and De Niro in it together. Yeah. Yeah. And the people have been waiting for it forever. I, I mean, believe that. Like, okay, yeah. The man has already established that is very good. All you heard about for six months was this movie, like Entertainment Weekly and all these magazines premiere. They all talk about it. So I remember going to see Heat, and I actually didn't like it as much as I should have. Don't spoil it. I'm watching it this weekend. I yeah, will not never spoil seen it. it. The expectations were just going sky high. to see Empire Strikes Back. What is probably the one that I wish I could have lived. I could. I wish I could have mm, been alive yeah. to go see Empire. I saw Return of the yeah. Jedi in theaters, not Empire. Though. See, that's pretty mm. awesome. That maybe that too. The first one I was very yes, cool. being alive for the for the. The chaos of the first one, but in terms of anticipation, yeah. you didn't know what to expect of the first Star Wars. The wait for that and like, what's going to happen next? I was so amped up for Phantom Menace. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, because yeah. that, like, you're like, we've been waiting for so long. And, and that was another one, good trailer. And I, also, I remember the poster, the first I remember, poster. Dude. I remember that, calling that, my The, the Duel of the Fate song. You're like, yeah, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's an all-time trailer. I remember calling my grandmother how, how much I loved the movie. <laughs> and I said, this one character, he, he had a funny oh, moment no. where he... He stuck his tongue out and picked up a, a <laughs> fruit at the table. <laughs> um, Grandma, you see Jar Jar? <laughs> I went uh, as Halloween. I went as Boss Nass that year. Boss Nass? No. Oh, that, that would be cool if you did. Wow. I'd be so niche. Of the, yeah. Speaking in Jamaican accent all day. Mm-hmm. 
yep. <laughs> like the fucking cinnamon thing, apple thing. Uh, okay. What a stupid fucking table this is. I'm, don't even get me started with this shit, dude. Uh, <laughs> don't even get me fucking started <laughs> with this stupid, stupid studio. Uh, all right. Before we get into <laughs> we our look draft. Like the studios look like they could be like, if we walked out, we could be in an <laughs> Ikea. Yeah. yeah. The best part, if you're watching, then you, the best fucking part of this is, is that they redesigned the studio and they and they didn't think about to like, like the, there's the so desk, much wrong. The desk it's, is still in the fucking way. Dude, it's like one eighth of our entire shot. <laughs> it takes up so the wall, much. The wall is peeling. <laughs> yeah, the wall is peeling. The wires shit in the shot. Like, dude, uh, whatever. Uh, before we get into the, um, <laughs> what did make me sit in? <laughs> fucking thing. Oh, calm down. You don't need that much cushion. It chair sucks. <laughs> calm down. You didn't sit in this motherfucker, did you? No, hell no. Yeah, yeah, I'm in I'm in the yeah. Star Trek Commander yeah. no, seat. It was the last one in the room. This was the only chair left. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, calm down. Yeah. Uh, before we get into our draft, uh, let's hear from Roan. Roan Apparel, Inc. Men's Closet have been due for a radical reinvention, and Roan has stepped up to the challenge. Their commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, flexible set of products known to man, and here's why. They help you get ready for any occasion with this collection that ha- offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan com- Commuter Collection because that is a product for every occasion. Their comfortable four-way stretch fabric breathes uh, very comfortably, which breathing is, is great. Like these, like these shorts are. I'm lucky enough; they are breathable. But there are some where it's just like everything collects. It's like it's like a fucking what do you call it? Like um, humidifier. Almost, yep. it's bad down. It's important in the summer. Very you know? important, beyond Get important. Those breathing. Exactly, super important. Uh, but yeah, they have the breathability and the flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way from your commute uh, to 18 holes of golf, anything you need. Well, they know that mobility is everything, which is also super important with shorts. I hate when shorts like restrict your movement. It fucking sucks. Um, it's important to people feel confident without the hassle. With the wrinkle release technology, the wrinkles disappear um, as you stretch and wear the products. And it's an easy look. To, it's easy to look and feel your best when you're wearing Roan. Plus, with Gold Fusion anti odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long. Also, very important. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can dish any dry cleaner altogether, which is great because that's also super expensive here. The commuter collection you can get you through any workday and straight to whatever comes next. Upgrade your closet with Roan and use promo code LIGHTS to save 20% off at Roan.com slash lights. That's R h o n e dot com slash lights it's time to find your corner office comfort uh they also they sent us a little something too this is, they sent us a little a peek a sneak peek of season two of loki no way so let's let's cue that up next season on loki our titular hero and mobius are in for more than they bargained for what are we doing here mobius wow there's one last variance that the tva needs to fix and that's the world of LCB. 2017, New York City. Okay, for my next pick in the Disney Pixar draft... Wait a second. I'm about to say Iron Giant. But that's not even a Disney movie. Thank God I caught myself. Sorry, my next pick is... 2017, Rots Crossing, Kentucky. You know, instead of becoming, like, a moderator for the Reddit of an independent podcast, maybe I should do literally anything else with my time. 2019, New York City. Thank God I made it to the Apple Store to get my iPod Touch serviced. Now to walk down this extremely simple staircase. Whoop, almost fell down. Thank God I caught myself. 2020, parts unknown. Hmm... Maybe I shouldn't heat up a Fig Newton in my car. 2023, Michigan. Perhaps I should actually watch the shows and movies. Who the devil is responsible for all these alterations? It's that guy right there that's draped in golden chains and surrounded by hot fitness influencers wearing tacky two-piece suits. What is his name? And why is he carrying so many discontinued energy drinks? His name is Bang. Bang the Conqueror. Loki, season two. This parody is brought to you by Rowan Apparel. All right, yeah, no, I think that that's, that's basically what we're looking for right now, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't wait. No. Very pumped. I think you guys are going to like it. Um, okay, let's do our draft. I randomized our draft order ahead of time. Again, we're doing movies from 2005 to 2009. Uh, it's Clemmer, then myself, then Jeff, then Gooch. Clemmer, first overall pick. I'm very surprised. I'm just so interested to see where you go with this. 
Yeah, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with something I think a lot of people would probably have as interval, and this isn't going to blow anyone's mind. We even talked about it earlier, Dark Knight. Mm. Um, I mean, the opening sequence, uh, I, got, I was lucky enough to see it in IMAX, it was just incredible with the bank heist. And then Ledger's performance, I mean, Chris, I mean look, Dark Knight's been talked to death, but it, it really is a stunning movie. It's aged remarkably well. So you go back and watch it now, it's still exciting, it's still awesome. Um, those new one Batman movies are going to live on for many, many, many years. They're really good, and they're still really good. I know the third one some people don't love, and that's fine, but Dark Knight is just an exceptional. Mm-hmm. It's the best superhero movie ever. It's one of the best movies ever. Something very funny, and I, I know I've talked to you guys about this, but the new Fast X movie is structurally the same thing as the Dark Knight. It is is literally Jason Momoa playing I don't Joker, believe you. I and don't. Vin Diesel is Batman. I swear to God, you will watch it and you will say- I do kind of believe that based on the trailer. You will watch Jason Momoa and you'll be like, that's the Joker. And you'll watch Vin Diesel and be like, that's Batman. Based on the clip they released of him like trying to blow up the the Vatican or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You'll you'll see. It's exactly that. And every every act that the Joker does in The Dark Knight, Hmm. basically Momoa forces- Vin Diesel to do this. You want to know how I got this hair? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, there's kind of something like that. Um, oh my god! <laughs> uh, it's uh, but yeah. So I think Dark Knight is a great. I, I mean, saw I saw a really interesting. Uh, I guess you'd call it a Twitter thread uh, the other day about like Christopher Nolan's like next movie Oppenheimer may in a way be like a self reflection of what he did to the superhero genre because like obviously Oppenheimer builds the atomic bomb, world changes, war changes forever. Um, what he did with the Dark Knight since then has, in a way, I mean, it ruined DC Studios post because mm-hmm. ever since then they tried to capture that high and capture that vibe, and clearly was not the right move. Yeah. Like, and so, yeah, the basically the Threads theory was like, yeah, no, he made this incredible thing, like one of the best ever, but the reaction to that in the the movie world has been like kind of a mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, set the bar too high. It's a fair yeah. point. It is. It is kind of funny though, and I always fact check because I always feel like it is kind of funny though that Iron Man did come out the same year as Dark. Mm-hmm. Yes, though. and it is, and it is the same exact. It's less dramatic. Mm-hmm. Like there's a more dramatic. Like we are focusing on the story element. This could win an Oscar type thing with, but Iron Man is such a departure from all others as well. Mm-hmm. It is kind of crazy they came out the same year. I think if you ask the average moviegoer, they mm-hmm. may say, oh, it probably came out after, probably emulated The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, and Iron Man's just such a great movie, too. I mean, yeah. Dark Knight is, I think, substantially better, but Iron Man. Correct. I mean, mm-hmm. to get two of the best superhero movies ever to come out in the same year, is, that's something. And, like, yeah. genre starting for MCU, or, like, universe starting, multi-billion dollar franchise starting for MCU, and then DC just doing the opposite way, basically. Uh, okay, so Dark Knight, first off the board. I'll go with No Country for Old Men, my number one movie of all time. I mean, I got to take it. Uh, no Country, I think, beyond uh, being the best, um, what do you call it, new Western movie, or what do they call it? Um, there's a term that I always forget. But new wave uh, Western movie of all time. Um, it's got some of the, what the fuck? Who's moving the cameras? Do you see that? Yeah. Don't move the cameras, control room. Um, but yeah, so I think uh, No Country for Old Men, one of the greatest casts, I think, assembled, like perfectly cast all the way down the line. Um, Anton Chigurh, one of the great villains of the last 20 years, perfectly ca- every single line just perfectly crafted by the Coen brothers. Um, and I love even like the side roles like with Woody Harrelson and, and um, what's his name? Uh, for Stephen Root. Stephen Root, really good mm-hmm. in it. Like all these tinier roles. Awesome. Uh, Josh Brolin, basically kind of like the restart of his career more or less, because he was in a lot of stinkers before that. Um, and it's one of my favorite. It's, it is like my number one movie of all time for a reason. I could watch that any day of the week and still enjoy it. Um, Tommy Lee Jones, I think one of his best performances as well by far. Uh, so no country off the board. Yeah, that's my number three on my list. Uh, Dark Knight 4. So I'll go with my number one, 9 out of 100. I'm going to go with Marty. I'm going to go with The Departed. Mm. Um, I, think, I, think the Depart- I think it's not his best movie, which is kind of crazy to say. I gave it a 99 out of 100. I good. I would have good fellas above there. But I do think The Departed is a movie that hits in every level and every scene. Like it just never misses. Um, I think it's one of the funniest movies of the of that of like that decade too. Super um, funny. Yeah. All the characters work so fucking well. Beyond quotable. So many threads that weave together perfectly at the end. Like it's such a satisfying ending to that movie. In every way, shape, and form. Uh, maybe the not the rat. 
The rat. The rat is not great. But the rat is but the rat is almost good now because yeah. we get the we get to joke Wait, about it so much. Like you guys I didn't like the rat. The rat? <laughs> I like the rat. I liked it the first time I saw it. I rolled my eyes in the theater when I saw it. But it's you, a great movie. I think The Party's kind of underrated now. People almost it is. almost kind of shit on it now. It's like no, like watch The Party. It's really fucking good. Mm-hmm. It's there's so many good roles, so many good characters. It's perfectly casted. Mm-hmm. It's every role top to bottom is perfectly yeah. casted. Uh, How about Nicholson? That's one I, I, I got to throw the flag on that one. You don't like that? Eh, I don't. I like him going nuts on that. I oh, don't. I think that's great. I think it's it's. I, I think it's. And I love Nicholson. So I love Scorsese. I love The Departed. I just think sometimes I'm like, Ugh. and some of the accents are a little like. I'm a Damon guy. Damon and DiCaprio are so good. Damon's so good in that movie. It's Alec probably Baldwin my favorite really good, Mark yeah. Wahlberg role. Oh, I was absolutely. about to say it's um, perfectly used. Walbert. Yes. Yeah. The 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 phone scene is my favorite scene in that yeah. movie. Super super good. I'm the guy who does the job. You must be the other guy. Like that. It's yeah. yeah the Departed. Ninety nine of hundred for me. That is my my number one. My favorite is when he's with the therapist and he's like doing the hand. And he's yeah. like every fucking day. Oh, <laughs> Leo's Via, so Via good. Forget, for, uh, Vera Farmiga, right? Yeah. yeah. I always forget she's in it, which is weird. Uh, the Gu- uh, Gucci of back to back. All right, first up, I'm going to go super bad, which I think Ooh, is tough. I, so, I yeah. didn't think you would. I think you, I thought you were too young for that. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? I was in like sixth grade. Perfect time. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it is for our generation. It is our Caddyshack. It is our like generation defining comedy. Um, so yeah, like endlessly ever made. I yeah, think. Mm-hmm. endlessly quotable. I mean, just perfect. Judd Apatow at his best. Uh, Set uh, so many great cameos and just side characters like i would have loved to even just spend two more hours with bill Hader and seth <laughs> rogan just riding around i mean their outtakes are so funny on super bad every every line i mean every 30 seconds to a minute you're you're laughing out loud like not just like chuckling or like like you are laughing um yeah no that movie fucking kills me to this day um any thoughts, guys? No, I think it's no. a super good. Pick. No, it's a yeah, great it's a, pick. It's fantastic. It's, it's basically one A, one B with me for Caddyshack for for my favorite comedies mm-hmm. ever, like best comedies ever made to me. Yeah, it's I I think those two I go back and forth on which I find is funnier. Yeah, Super Super Red is just so every again that's a movie perfectly casted. Every role in the movie is hilarious. Yeah, dude, Joe Latrulli. Joe Joe Lo is so. <laughs> you look like my. What does he say? You look like my friend. Uh... Yes. Yeah, oh man, dude, it's so fucking good. You, you look like his brother. Yeah, <laughs> and then that's how you have to fucking sing at the party later. Yeah, I have fuck. S- what's it's it's uh what the fuck's his name? You look, yeah, fuck. He looked, mm-hmm. <laughs> when, he, when they're interviewing the his the cashier uh, lady at the same time, and <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she's like, they looked like you, Jewish. You totally like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have so many hey, comedies. Jimmy? Oh my god, I have so many comedies on, on my top. 20, oh yeah, twenty list here. If you ask me to do the same list from like twenty. 20- 11 or 2010 to 2014 i would have no comedies no yeah. oh, right there's comedies left died off. with this decade mm-hmm. they did the best yeah there's one or two trickle into like 2010 2011 but like not You're really right. yeah yeah it, this 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 movie is it i mean it's it's i get it's a 98 of 100 for me it's, one it's of the fantastic movies. really good movie yeah that the the interrogation scene is <laughs> is uh fuck there's another quote about oh you guys on MySpace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's Joe, but also Joe Latruglio is a constant in a lot of those movies on yes. your list too. He's in so many of these movies. Uh, Gucci, your next pick. I'll follow that back up with Inglorious Bastards. Oh, fuck, fuck, man. I, mean, I so can't bad. let that fall. Come I mean, on. I, unreal. You, either you thought that was going to get past me. Yeah. yeah. What, what are you talking <laughs> that's about? That's fair here? point. That's, that's not falling. I'm surprised it even made it out of the first. I, I was hoping I'd get one of those, but I was like, I think he's going to pick probably both mm-hmm. of these. Yeah, that no. Was my number two. Um, it's top one, top two, eh, maybe top three Tarantino for me. Might be my third Tarantino. But still, regardless, I think it is what he thinks is his masterpiece. Very clearly, that closing sequence, just a absolute wink and a nod to the camera. Um, I mean, just fantastic. I think Hans Landa is one of the all-time great villains. Um, I mean, just immediate from the opening scene, like you're like, holy shit, this guy is... It's like the Joker. It's like it's like Heath Ledger's Joker, where you're like, this guy is insane, but at the same time, he is in complete control of the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, Brad Pitt, just fantastic um, comedically. <laughs> Dude, you're so good. So funny. Every time he tries to do that Italian accent, kills me. Uh, Diane Kruger, fantastic. 
Michael Fassbender, that scene in the bar, yeah. Yeah. just great. That whole sequence, the bar scene is the one of bar scene's yeah. incredible. Yeah. I mean, it has the best opening of any movie ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those first it's up 15 there. minutes, there's nothing tops. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. That and The Dark Knight are probably like. That's I mean, just insane that these movies just came out within like three years of each other. I know. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, that's Bastards is is uh, pretty, pretty tough to top. Yeah, I have a poster of it. Um, over on my desk. I, you know, it is it is my number one Tarantino movie too. Number one? Yeah. Oh, no, I mean Pulp Fiction. I like Jackie Brown more. I like uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yeah, more. Oh, good. I mean, they're all good. I mean, we're, we're it's, arguing Joe DiMaggio and Willie Mays. Once is, like, yeah. I mean, once is close to me. Once I also think is a fucking masterpiece. Once, once I think is my number one. But if I had to pick my favorite, it's probably Kill, one, Kill once, Bill. Once will oh, age. Really? Yeah. Once will age really well. Too. I think. I think once was not exactly people expected from him. And I think people, oh. they didn't shit on it. I mean, it got no. praise. Yeah. But I don't think it got as much love that it probably deserves. But in Glorious Bastards, I, I just think. That might be the movie I was most excited about seeing. Honestly. Mm. Once I was very like, excited for once. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, your pick. Uh, tough. Because now it kind of all, it muddies up. All very good movies. It really yes. does. Uh, but I'll, I'll go a little more blockbustery and mainstream. I'll go Casino Royale. Mm. I think Casino Royale changed. It changed Bond. Um, forever. I think Casino Royale is one of the best action movies. Oh, so talk about a great opening sequence. That that's another one of the probably one of the best opening sequences in the last 20, 30 years. The parkour. Parkour. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy to think about. It's like if someone watched that, like, oh, parkour. But like and then it, it fit perfect for that time period. Casino Royale is one of the best action movies ever made. Honestly, I mean I think I think it's the best Bond movie ever made. Um, it's so fucking good. You like that better than Skyfall? I do. Okay, I, I, I think it's. Skyfall. I think I don't think it's that crazy, but yeah, I'm surprised. Anything I'm rated a 95 or above for me is basically perfect. At that point, it's just splitting hairs. Like it basically goes 90 through 94, and then it's just 100. And I, I think it's it's a near flawless movie. Poker scene, so fucking good. Uh, great villain. She's such a good villain. Uh, it, it's yeah. What's his face? Uh, Jeffrey Wright. Yeah, nice little joke. Uh, <laughs> Felix, Felix, what's fuck's his last name in the? What's Felix's last name in the James Bond universe? Um, Garter or some shit? I forget. Uh, bet on black today, Bond. <laughs> uh, James. <laughs> um, yeah, so so Casino Royale for me is uh, is up there. Even though I think mm -hmm. I think the Vesper storyline gets a little annoying, like in the, in the following movies. But like, I, I do I do think Casino Royale is is unbelievable. I've mentioned it's a this, that that Solace was so bad. I've mentioned this before, but like movie critics will be very buttoned up, and but until they see Eva Green, and then they just <laughs> come their pants. They will they like in writing they'll be like Eva Green that busty beautiful woman like they are i don't know what it is felix they, lighter i don't know why i didn't think lighter. it was lighter yeah maybe because of uh what lighter on the astros i was like maybe i'm just looking at mm. owl lighter picture for the mets who's 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 his kid jack lighter he's a minor league of the rangers mm. oh the rangers I'm right. texas team club i don't know why i was like it's like am i just making that up because i just read about him yesterday yeah. but no it's felix lighter yeah. i'll follow jeff's strategy and i'll draft iron man i know i need a blockbuster uh you thought you're gonna get iron man and Dark Knight back to back that would have been really no, tough. No, I didn't. On the vote. But I was hoping maybe the third or fourth round. But I, yeah. there's no way it's going to last that long. I'll take I'll take it just because like it's maybe it's not necessarily better than I think it isn't better than a lot of the stuff I have rated above it. But at the same time, like Iron Man is so culturally significant in so many different ways. Like beyond it, jump starting again this multi 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 billion dollar franchise, um, basically. In, in basically being the genesis of all that and being like what superheroes can be in the in the movie medium because so many times before that it's been trash it's been garbage um so for iron man to do that to resurrect the career of robert downey jr basically um and also to kind of take off for um uh favreau favreau yeah, yeah. to being what favreau is now which is like one of the most sought after dudes in hollywood um is awesome and i think there's just so many great things about iron man the fact that it's like an intimate smaller scale compared to everything else you watch in the mcu now uh, I do like, and we talked about this earlier, um, the uh, the Iron Monger character mm -hmm. uh, figures really well played, and all the side guys, like all the tiny stuff that happens in Iron Man, is really cool. The Jericho scene, like all that. Yeah, shit it's, it's a genre defining performance too from RDJ. So exactly, he's, he it's literally became an iconic. Like he's up there with fucking any role where you become up there with Darth Vader. Yeah, like in terms of of, of franchise. And fictional characters, like, that's pretty crazy. And I think he's, like, 1A, 1B with, like, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, where it's, like, I can't imagine anyone else taking this role. Like, there's no other face I can imagine on that character. 
It was nice watching Iron Man. I rewatched it about a year or so ago, and it's not a Marvel movie that's focused on the next story. It's yeah. actually like interested in just telling this story, and it's kind of almost sad. Like, this is what Marvel movies could be. They're really this is really entertaining, a really good story. Contained. And then instead, it became you know Marvel just becomes like what's next as opposed to what's mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. and that's too bad. But Mar- Iron Man's fantastic. Yeah, great movie. Uh, Clemmer, you have back to back. Oh wow. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the comedy off the board. This is not. Not the biggest comedy of all time, for sure, but Role Models. Wow, I wow. love Role Models. Oh, I didn't you, 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 you dug it. a little. I didn't even put it on here because I was like, I, I feel like I'm going to get other ones. I love Role Models. I mean, it's such a good movie. It makes me laugh. It makes me laugh love, more than any other take movie. Me down to like, the streets. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's it's fantastic. I mean, the, the scene in the coffee shop with Paul Rudd and the Venti, the like, it's Venti, just, yeah. it might not be a funnier scene for me. Super Bad is so good, and I, I appreciate it, but like, I laugh harder when I watch Role Models. Like, yeah. But I mean, we're talking, once again, we're arguing Willie Mays Splitting and hairs. Joe DiMaggio. Like, they're both great, great Severely comedies. Severely underappreciated comedy, in my opinion. Like, I agree. You, you white, you Ben Affleck. Like, there's so many great lines in that movie. Chris um, Wins Plus is so I funny. probably grabbed it a little too early, but I had to get it. Um, so that's the, the the fake Wings song is very funny. <laughs> that's the, the, the Wings, they, man. The fact that's they not... recorded it and put it in the tie yeah, in the yeah, credits, yeah. too. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jane Lynch Jane Lynch is, is so fantastic. Funny. You know what I used to have for breakfast? Yeah. Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sitting there in the thing, in the, in the what do you call it, the deli or whatever with the hot dogs. Like, yeah, look at this. <laughs> and just yeah. pushing it out of the hot dog. But she's like, isn't it, uh, like, miss? It's like, isn't it Dr. Bullshit and Mr. Fuller? Yeah. He's like, which one else has the pH? Yeah. <laughs> you can it's a very bullshit good a bullshit cynical Paul Rudd role, too. <laughs> also, what's his name? Like, um, uh, Ken Jong, very funny in that. Like, as the, uh, the ba- main bad guy for the LARPing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, and that, and that's probably, that's a, that's an even funnier Joe Latruglio. Yes, yes dude, Joe Latruglio. Rub, 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 rub a dub dub. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really, really stupid one liner from, from Joe Latruglio. Dude, you go watch the outtakes for that too. They could not get through that line, the rub a dub dub. Right. They were dying at that. <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a, <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene that my roommate and I, freshman year of college, we always, I, I don't know, it got me every fucking time. I think I know what you want. No, I, I, if you do, I'd be shocked. It's when, it's when uh, Chris Ruben's plus character feeds like the troll okay. kids. It's like he, like, <laughs> oh yeah, he's like, treats, and they, and they like, they, they thank him, but they thank him in like the native different language, tongue. yeah. And they, 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 oh, they go, Jarkule. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, <it's> so, <laughs> and then the kid, the other one that gets is, is when the kid, he's in the tree and he, he's like, let the battle begin, and he just does like like a like a bird noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so fucking stupid. Mine was gonna be, and I think so it's my stupid. favorite scene from that movie. It's just I think a throwaway was supposed to be, but like they drop off the kids to go LARPing, and um, Paul Rudd asks him, he's like, "Yep, yeah, so pick us up around 8. and the kid the guy's like, "Fuck you, Miss Daisy," <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just yeah. drives away. It's such a throwaway line, but it's so fucking funny. It kills me every time. Oh, the Minotaur, Sean William Scott, yes. maybe <laughs> never used better. It's just like, it's just a really quiet just, Louis C.K. role. Yeah. Man. Look, that's yeah. right. look at me. Stealing TV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that that's my that, is that my was so kills me. Good. Yeah, that could be any on. ball guy on there. Look at me. Steve Garvey. Yeah. Stealing TVs. <laughs> your, your mom let me keep the suit after I fucked her. Yeah. Like, oh, oh God, I gotta I gotta watch that movie tonight, oh, dude. My God, so funny. Yeah, that that TV one is that's actually that is a funny yeah. one. Yeah. All right, Clemmer. So this one. is the pick that will make me guaranteed to lose this draft. I'm sure I'll finish in oh. fourth. That's fine. I'm already okay with that. I've done enough of these where I always finish last anyway, so I'm gonna pick the movies I like. <laughs> And it's Munich. Um, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So this uh. is a sensational movie about revenge. It's Spielberg's best movie of the century. I, you catch me if you can is there, but th- this is right there with it for me. Uh, a- incredible Eric Banner performance. Daniel Craig's in this very good. But it just shows you, like, I just find revenge. And then the concept of the, the – what I like about this movie so much is it shows you the aftermath of revenge mm-hmm. and how, like, yes, you get revenge, but it never quite fulfills you and you're left with the pain of the deeds you've done. And that sort of emotional toll is just chilling to watch. And even though they did all the – they did it for the right reasons, the revenge is justified. Is it worth – the inner struggle. And that stuff to me, I'm all in for. I think Munich is a brilliant film. It's severely underrated. I very, I agree underappreciated mm. in that. There's the one scene I always like where like they go up to the female assassin's boat or whatever. And yes. hit him with that, like yep. whatever that gun is. And she just sits there and just like kind of falls like ragdolls. I've never seen a scene like that before. And it was really cool. No, Spielberg really kind of embraced the violence and embraced some of the, the nastiness that uh, 
you know, we don't really see him embrace before. Remember, even like Schindler's List is black yeah. and white. Like, you could tell there's some sort of disconnect there. But Munich, he's like, I got to tell brutal. the story. It's a very brutal story. And it's, uh, it's a very sad story. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. Munich, Munich's very good. But and now I've finished in fourth place. In the <laughs> uh, for my pick, um, I was I took a gamble not taking this before Iron Man, but I'm, I'm happy it paid off uh, in Bruges. In Bruges is one of my favorite movies of that this entire era by far. One of my favorite comedies. Uh, Steve, Steve McDonough's best movie, in my opinion, by a decent chunk, which is, again, splitting hairs. But I fucking Steve McDonough. Whatever, Martin. Martin, whatever, dude. <laughs> oh, Steve. Whatever, dude. His brother did it. Uh, in Bruges, I think, is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. And I can rewatch it any day of the week. I think Colin Farrell is back and forth. It's one of, if that is a role we were talking about with like Robert or uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, basically, like any guy who's like, you think they're down. Colin Farrell was that space for me at this point, like early in the 2000s. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, this guy kind of sucks. Like he's like a big face, but he's doing Alexander and he's doing like SWAT and he's doing like all this shit. And then you see him in a movie like in Bruges, you're like, oh, he can really act. Like he's actually very good and very funny. He all these has a range, basically. Brendan Gleeson, very, very funny in this. And Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes is unreal fantastic. in this yeah. movie. He's so good. You're like, a fucking inanimate yeah, object. Yeah, you're, you're an inanimate <laughs> fucking object. And like that whole scene and the ending of that movie too was also really, really good. Uh, where he like accidentally shoots the little person, thinks it's a kid. He's like, we're going to live by our principles and he just kills himself. Fucking really, really good movie. Um, and one of my favorites. And if that's one where if it loses me uh, votes on the graphic, I don't care. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that. I don't will. think it will either, but I don't think it's as widely seen as some of the other shit that's on so far. Uh, but Embers, I fucking love, and there's no way I was letting that escape. I didn't hear a lot of arguments when I said I was going to finish in last. You guys all seemed like, yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> Munich was a bit of a yeah, reach yeah, you're, there. You're fucked, Clemmer. You could have gotten Munich in last. Definitely, you definitely could have gotten Munich <laughs> I have other there. bizarre movies on here as well, so I'm sure I only have so much space. Uh, Jeff, your pick. There are a lot of comedies um, that I could pick, but this, I think, is pretty easy. I would have probably taken this even if I had Super, and that's Tropic Thunder. Oh, I love Tropic uh, Thunder. Tropic uh, Thunder is – Tropic Thunder is, is – it gets better every time I watch it. Uh, <laughs> but Conaghy's so fucking Yeah, good. every role is so fucking funny, which is crazy that they do that because they're all so over the top. Mm -hmm. And they all blend. Great Jay Barish. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. He's just there. He is, he is there to play the straightest white rice role just to keep it, <laughs> to give you a little sense of like relatability. Yeah, yeah. Like, but it is such a funny movie. Tom Cruise, um, man. Great Ben Stiller role written by Justin Theroux, too. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of a funny little weird thing. Uh, but yeah, great McConaughey. Uh, the opening is amazing. The fake trailers is one yeah. of the most genius things ever yeah, done. The, the Portnoy's or the fatties? Yeah. Or the, the guy's Jeff name is Portnoy. Jeff Portnoy. Yeah. <laughs> the fatties. Yeah. Booty sweat. To Booty have the, sweat. Commercial, yeah. the commercial before the trailers. I mean, honestly, just alone. Just alone, the, the trailers for the movie make that funnier than almost anything that came out in the 2010s. Mm -hmm. Like when, when you go into boy, when it comes out. Oh, yeah. Out, oh, yeah question. This would have been the top comedy of the decade if it came out in oh, 2011. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like, not uh, even close. I, I have a question. Like, has, have we gotten enough from Ben Stiller? Did, did Ben Stiller, do, did he live up to what he should have been? I think he because like he didn't just stick with acting like because I was directed and written a bunch of shit too. Right, and he it's directed hard to this. Say. Yeah, exactly. He wrote, he directed this. I mean, he'd been doing other stuff where I think he, he more experimental. He got out of like the comedy space a little bit. He's doing like Walter Mitty and all that shit, which I loved. Yeah, we're Walter Mitty guys. I love I Walter, Walter Mitty. Mitty. Um, I, well, I've liked Walter Mitty more and more as time's gone. It's on. a fantastic movie. I just wish he did more. I guess I wish he did less. Meet the Fockers Part Nine mm. and more directing interesting movies and great comedies. He also yeah. has a great comedic director. You could argue. You could argue Severance. Uh, Severance. Severance. Yeah. Have you, you watched Severance? Severance? I have not show. watched Severance. Yet. Um, that was I my number to, one right? show of last yeah, year. I, yeah. Very good Curb performance. Yeah. It's great in Curb. Very funny in original Rest of Development, by the way. Yeah, I know. But like, this is like small. I, I want to see him direct Tony more Wonders. comedies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is like he's. This is such a funny movie. He directed this. <laughs> he's great in it. <laughs> Him, him, and him in Arrested Development is is so fun. Have you been Arrested Development guy? Yeah, I saw it when it came out. When so he's Tony Wonder. I see. I, and he's like, and he I haven't seen it like twenty years. He always pulls things out of his body. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Do, you, do you not? You gotta I don't remember it. Tony Wonder. Yeah, he pulls. Yeah. <laughs> he pulls like he's like he always tried to hurt himself in the scene. He'd be like, Ugh! and it, but he'd find like food. He's like, ah, you want a Hanukkah cookie, man? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like good tricks. Uh, fuck yeah, Tropic Thunder for me is is my. That's another super rewatchable one too. 
<laughs> it's a fuck. I love Tropic Thunder. Uh, Gucci, back to uh, I'm looking at like what he's got coming up. Cause he's got seven projects listed. Oh, shit. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look at that later. Um, damn. All right. That was what I was going to take. That's interesting. Um, but I will pivot again. Comedy. There are better movies out there probably, but there's just, I got to go with these comedies that I love and I've rewatched a million times. Like, I'm going to go Hot Rod. Ah, uh, damn. I thought I'd get that late. No, I, I love Hot yeah, Rod. I would have taken it next. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one of those things where it came out and if you got it, you got it. And mm. if, if you got it, you fucking loved it because it was so different from like anything else you'd seen. <laughs> just so stupid. And it just made you like laugh like you'd never laughed before. Like, oh my God, the fucking I'm AM. Steve and I like to party. <laughs> yeah, that that one. I was having a dream last night and I was, and the, all these elves kidnapped me and took me to the forest. <laughs> like, he just, and then he just pivots to, hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Danny McBride in that movie is fucking perfect. That's one of my favorite performances of his. I drink green tea every goddamn day. Oh, <laughs> beating the fuck out of that dude. God. Uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, Chris Parnell. Chris Parnell. Really when he comes up with the, <laughs> with the, the AM, tattoo. FM. And he's like, like you're, you're wondering how he's, how he's peeing on both. <laughs> I like to imagine. Has, Such I like a to imagine there's a little bit of <laughs> semen <laughs> caught in his urethra. From the night before. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen Hot Rod. Really? Very, yeah. Oh, you'd like it. It's, I mean, Very it's stupid. funny, man. It's so stupid. The falling scene where he's doing like the dance. Oh, my God. Dude. It is. It is. It's a movie again where the more you watch, the more you like it. Pop stars the same exact way. Yeah. Uh, it's just so. It's just so different. Like I had. I had to have it. Dude, the I whole character that. of Kevin is very funny. Oh, um, Yorma Tacoma role. Yeah. So good. <laughs> Yorma just such a weird looking little kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a little homeschooled boy. I said you look shitty, Denise. Good night. <laughs> oh man, it's so good. Uh, hey, go grab a couple of dong bags. Yeah, and Will Arnett too. Yeah. I forgot it's how good nice, he is in that. It's, a, it's an iconic Will Arnett like gonna side some, care performance. Going to go pick up some vitamin water. So I'm going to get some <laughs> dong bags while I'm out. Go get some dong bags and knock boots later. Yeah. Yeah. Sully? Sully! Yeah. <laughs> no fucking way. Uh, second pick. Oh man, it's so hard not to keep picking these comedies, but I'm gonna go back to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Forgetting Sarah Marshall, oh. which is like one of my favorite rom coms of all time. The best rom com ever. So right? fucking Can good, we, man. I, mean, I think it's my top rated. If I had to guess, my, my number one is the problem. 10 the things problem I hate. with Forgetting Sarah Marshall being rom com is so hard to define. Yeah, because that's true. when I think rom com, I think like how to lose a guy in ten days, like. I, and that's maybe disrespectful to the genre, but Forgetting Sir Marshall is so through and through a comedy that I almost don't, but I guess it is. It, it has is. all the beats though, right? Yeah, it does. You're right. You're right. It just, but that's just, rom-com is so hard to define. But I think that, I think what elevates this is it's so funny, it's so smart, and it does hit all those beats, and yet you're still entertained. Yeah. It's, it's a it's, very formulaic Sarah movie, is. but it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. you, Billy Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> like just, uh, so much in there. I, I just love it. Great side characters, Paul the, Rudd. And it's just so funny. Yeah. I, I still wish he had actually put out the Dracula musical. Yeah. Like, because it, yeah. like, the premise does sound fucking hilarious. Like, you sound like you're from London, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's probably like his last. Actually, get into the Greek was fine. But yeah, no. What's his face? Uh, all this uh, snow is the character. Russell Brand. Russell yeah, Brand. Russell Brand. He's like yeah. a right wing guy. He's good guy in now. that. Yeah. He's, he's, he's so, like a right wing commenter or something now. It's weird. Interesting career pivot. Yeah. Um, Very interesting. Yeah, no, I, I love that movie. Yeah. It's like an immediate feel good. Super rewatchable too. Very rewatchable. You find new stuff I feel like every time you watch, right? Yeah. Uh Jeff, your pick. Um it's tough. I've been a run on comedies. Um I, I I could probably get a bunch of the other movies. So I'm gonna I'll go comedy too. There's not much left in terms of like the top tier. Man. I'll go Step Brothers. Fuck. Um, I, I do turn. fucking love Step Brothers. Adam Scott is like one of my favorite comedy characters of all time in that movie. Um, that the, the dinner scene, I think, is one of the funniest written things in the decade. The, What's this guy's problem? Yeah, it just, it's so fucking. <laughs> Adam Scott is so goddamn like, good, man. Uh, not, not just. Or Bonita Fish, Not big. just the key, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. What is it? Not just the cubes. <laughs> Yeah, the cubes. Uh, Chris Daughtry, Jeff Probst, Super Chef Bobby Flay. Yes. <laughs> guilty. It's, it's guilty as charged on the stories. The stories. Yeah, it's it's we talked oh, about it. And he actually didn't have much to see. Like, I think he just kind of was like, yeah, we just they just it wasn't like a complex written like Adam McKay scene, but they, it's so funny how it plays <laughs> out. Cause so much of that movie is played so straight, but so ridiculous. Um Step Brothers is is fucking awesome. It's 
<laughs> I, I mean, I love Adam McKay humor, and I, I think his recent stuff has just kind of fallen off a hair. Like, even a hair? Like, <laughs> no, I, a, I, a whole wig. I, I think I think some of it's still pretty good. Like, I, I don't even love what you call. What's that stupid fucking movie? From don't last look year? up. Yeah, I mean that was not that was not <laughs> a good I movie. Don't, I don't despise it. No, I don't despise it either. But when we talk about like Step Brothers, and I think and then, there's a lot of I funny. Don't look up. That's more than a hair. And there's a lot of funny in the Lakers thing too. I think there's a lot of good in the Lakers stuff. I wish it was way better. I wish it was way better. But like a Big Short, I think Big Short's like, fantastic. A masterpiece. But that, that still, came regardless. out a long time ago. That, that's true. That is like almost it's like eight years. Yeah. Almost. But I, uh, Step Brothers is. So well done because it has so much that's like grounded in reality, but then played up to the absurd. The dream sequence, the time, like the time to say goodbye at the end with like the montage. <laughs> uh, and I, and again, in that's the, 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 the common thread with all these movies is whether it's like the Steve Garvey stealing TVs thing or Horatio Sands, like only playing 80s Joel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that, there, that's what I do feel like a lot of comedies. And again, there's a couple that did it in the early 2010s. Like I think 21 Jump Street's a rare exception from the 2010s that it, there's, they, they rely on so many like big, dumb, like all oh, big dumb moments from your characters where there are a lot of funny moments in Step Brothers and super bad and but it's the little things it's the attention to detail to have funny moments in every scene and even when it's not calling for you to make that le- like comedies nowadays that are bad are like the the wrong Missy the the no. wrong Missy is that what it is yeah the young Missy the wrong Missy the <laughs> wrong like, Missy great example Hellfire. like the wrong Missy like it, it's it's Almost as if they want to put on the screen the laugh sign. They're instructing you to like, this is the moment you laugh. Where these twenty, these two thousand, these late two thousands comedies line, line, were so line. subtle. They were quick lines. They never stopped to make you laugh. Like they and just they kept also going. weren't afraid. I mean, you know, right. we haven't discussed it, but twenty twelve, you have the Me Too movement, you have cancel culture, and there's some great things that came of it. Obviously, there's some positives, but there's also a negative side to it, and it made people fearful to make comedies. And it's just a fact. Yeah, they just, don't, at, they just well, don't. People don't want to make comedies anymore. No, it's very true. Because they don't want to offend some. Funny, your stuff is probably like on streaming and on YouTube or whatever. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that also there's a few things to play into. I think it's harder to do like relevant comedy, like yeah, because because of YouTube, because of TikTok, like the jokes are just already there and everything moves so fast. Where if you try to make a if you write a comedy today, a movie comes out 18 months from now, those jokes, those references, anything you do are likely outdated mm-hmm. by severely outdated. I don't think that's the problem. I, I, think, I think the it's, problem I think it is people, super bad would never come out today because people would be afraid of offending somebody. Super bad definitely wouldn't. I mean, no. almost all of these movies have a moment or two where it's like, well, we let's can't see, have that because go that's going to. Let's go to his pure comedies in the last, like even just. They're not good. It's gonna like going to go down heights. to the there's cheesecake like, factory. Have there's like drink. Death of Stalin, which is like all the way at the top. Like, And then there's. But even that, would you then. consider that a pure comedy? It's like a black com- or a dark comedy, but like, I don't know. Like pure. I have, like, I have nothing. We have nothing rated above a ninety in the last five years. No, probably. it's been terrible. I mean, look at Judd Apatow's Bomb career Springs, path. The good Bomb boss, Springs is really good. Book Smart. Book Smart is really good too, but that's also not in the level of any of the comedy. And it also it fits it the so it fits hard. the mold of being a safer comedy, and it's mm. being okay. And like Apatow went from making these comedies, and then he went and did Girls. Yeah, and right. it's like, hey, good on him for like having the intelligence to see where the things were going. But I, but, I would even like, it, it's the more serious stuff. It's the it's the dramedies that I think are 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 funnier now than just the pure comedies like the big the big sick big sick yeah, yeah. like taking an appetite like I I personally love uh, King of Staten Island for example like I I prefer the like the dramedy Lady Bird yeah the dramedies are the funnier things now pure comedies just the, again the pure comedies now are the fucking wrong Missy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Hubie Halloween, which Hubie, Hubie Halloween was I not was, as bad as the wrong. Movie. I don't even. Yeah, it's unfair to even put that this was in a the bad same comp. The wrong Missy like is one of the biggest piles of dog shit ever made. Really bad. Embarrassing. No offense to Lauren Lapkus, <laughs> but that <laughs> movie oh, is hellfire. Hellfire. <laughs> oh, weird no. fucking idea that was. Uh, so Step Brothers off the board. I will since most of the comedies, there's a big run. That was just four in a row that got five in a row. Technically, that went off the board. 
Uh, I'll get another one that's in my top grouping. Um, very similar to No uh, No Country for Old Men. There will be blood. They filmed yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Had f- shooting problems because they were filming so close to each other. Uh, there will be blood. One of Daniel Day Lewis's best roles, maybe if not the number one. Like Paul Dano, that kind of his coming out party as mm-hmm. like a legit actor. Um, and just one of my favorite movies to watch. Super, super. Just like I don't know how to say, but like or how to really kind of define it. But it's almost like very, very enthralling. Like yeah. that entire storyline. Like once you start, it's like you just like you feel on edge. Like you feel like you need to see what's going to happen. And just I love everything about that story. Another one of my favorites. And uh, man, can't do a sequel, but I'd like to see a sequel. Dude, how, how Paul Dano, you know the story be- behind Paul Dano getting Hit that me. role? So like two weeks before they were start, sp- supposed to start like principal filming, the actor who had his role, what was it was like a dual role because you're playing. Yeah, like, twins or whatever. But it wasn't set up that way. Dana was just supposed to play a brother, mm-hmm. like the the brother that disappears at the first the first yeah. one. Um, that actor, though, who was supposed to play the second one, the main character, he retired from acting. He just completely stopped. He's like, I'm not doing it anymore. And so they were scrambling. They're like, either we're going to have to push this, find someone new. But Paul Thomas Anderson was like, no, we're going to rewrite this. And Paul Dana is going to be a twin now. And this is how we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And of course, Dano just comes in and he just knocks it out of the park. Just so good, so good. That, I mean, that bowling alley scene, so yep. good. I mean, good. it got parodied a lot because of the drink your milkshake thing, but it really is a fucking masterclass. Right, top three performance of the decade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would put I'd put Christoph Waltz up there. Glorious. The only reason I don't like it more, it's more of a character study, and I'm just more of a story guy, and that's why it doesn't hit as hard yeah. for me. But it's, I mean, just an amazing, I mean, I mean, Christ, dude, it's just, it's a brilliant film. Kel O'Neill was supposed to originally play him. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say Day Lewis, There Will Be Blood, Christoph Waltz, Inglorious, and then probably like Sandler Click for best three points of the decade. <laughs> I do legitimately love Sandler and Click. <laughs> I, couldn't even get, I couldn't get a rise out of Clemmer on that goodness not without laughing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a big three. It, that truly really is the three best. Click um, was such a, I hate that movie for making me cry. Yeah, like fuck crazy. you like it's supposed to be a fun little family comedy i'm sitting there next to my mom just crying you know how embarrassing that was fucking watch you, didn't, you didn't like the movie that much huh it was good it actually is like a pretty good movie but it I just like, it. like was it's like fine. not what was sold like you go in it's in the sandler era yes, where yes. everything he did was it's comedy fun. and so you're expecting like something lighthearted, yeah. and the twist at the end just kind of fucking wrecks you it's like holy is shit back and sell on that i don't even remember right. her being in that mm-hmm. was she, she the wife, the wife yeah. right I mean, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. of course, Adam Sandler has a <laughs> hot wife. Yeah, hot wife. Bed, Bath and Beyond guy. Uh, Clemmer, back to back. Oy. Your last two. My last two. Oh, no. Um, okay, so I'll take a I'll take a comedy first because and there, are, there still are a bunch of good comedies out there. Yeah, it's and, shocking. Uh, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with The Hangover. Mm. Um, just it's just obviously just brilliant and funny. The Bradley Cooper character is great. Um. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the sequel. In fact, I've never seen the third one. I've only seen the second one. So that was a carbon copy. It's, I was kind of disappointed. It's still funny, though. Yeah. I'll defend that the Hangover Part 2 is still... It's still funny. Not as funny as the first, but yeah, it's No, but it's funny. still like... A tough bar. The third, the third, yeah. I honestly can't remember the sequels at all. I remember seeing them, but I just don't remember anything from the them. The second is still funny. I'm not defending it as a good, as a great or good, like, really they get, good movie. They but go to Thailand? I like, mm-hmm. like, the carbon copy thing was obviously intentional. Yeah. Like they did it as a like part of the humor, and I think that was funny. Mm-hmm. But it's the first was I mean the, the first seeing it the seeing the first in the theater oh my god was an ex, was a very memorable movie going it to was space. and then the credit sequence uh-huh. with the photographs I mean in the theaters people were gasping like yeah. it was so brilliant people love there's a little so I, I've always hear, I've always hated the revisionist history on Hangover I think people get a little they're a little too unfair about it mm-hmm. what do you mean. Like, 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 oh, it wasn't as fun. It was oh. fucking, and when, and when that shit came out. It was a moment, It's dude. still funny. I watched yeah, it like it's a year ago. Still it's still yeah, really it's, funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and like I said, I'm kind of just reading movies I like here. Uh, it's The Pursuit of Happiness. Wow. So, wow. Dude, you're a dead last. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the second I said Munich, I knew what my favorite so many was. on the board. I, I, I want to do a sixth round. I still have a ton. I, I, oh I'm volleying for a sixth round here. Yeah, maybe a sixth round. I'm you can str- draft a good I mean, movie. I am struggling. There's- I am drafting good movies, motherfucker. <laughs> this Pursuit of Happiness. Okay, I'll take some shots here, I know. And I'm definitely a sucker for sentimentality, whether it be Feel the Dreams, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Man, I do I, you know, I know you cried a click, very emotional film. I ball at this. 
Mm. And um, the scene when he's in the subway bathroom, the train bathroom, and they're trying to get in, and he's just like, someone's going to the bathroom, he's like holding the door, and he's got his cradle with his son. It's like, man, this, this, you just root for this guy. I think it's a great Will Smith performance. I know it, it might be, someone might say it's corny, but you know what? It's based on a true story. It's what happens, so it's not that corny. It's mm. really good. I like it a lot. Way better than seven pounds. What's that? Way better than seven pounds. Way better than seven pounds. Not, I like not, this movie a lot. not as good as um, the one with Helen Mirren, though. Uh, wait, no. Um, fucking collateral. Cl- wait, is that collateral beauty? Yeah, collateral. I've beauty. not seen that. Fucking wait. amazing. What's yeah. the, <laughs> no, the no. pile of shit? Yeah, no, what sucks so much what's ass. The Marvel Robbie one that was really bad. Focus, focus, focus. Yeah. Do you guys, do focus. you guys hate I, this movie? I still think the first hour. Of no, I, like, I like it. It wouldn't even come close to this for me. Mm. I like it. I, I think it's good. There's a bunch on here that like I'm gonna. No, I have. I have a. That's why I said I want to do a sixth round because I still have a bunch here as well. I believe if I remember right, I saw Pursuit Happiness for the first time in high school. Like I think yeah. it was a freshman in high school when I saw it for the first time, and I was like, oh, I could watch this. I'm, a, I'm yeah. a sucker for 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 that. And I said I know the father son stuff. I'm also a sucker for yeah. so it just kind of it, it hit my zone. I'm sure I'll get savage for it, and that's just fine. <sighs> okay, for my last pick. I'll go with a movie that, like, we've talked about a lot of comedies on here that are, like, influential, like, define the, the the era or whatever. I think this movie is one that is so culturally influential, like, it blows the other ones out of the water in that um, sort of realm. But it's Borat. I mean, you yeah. want to talk about a film, a movie that's, any comedy movie that's more culturally relevant than Borat, I'd be, I'd be tough to find. Like, in that era of 2000, 2010, if you didn't watch Borat, you were the biggest fucking loser yeah, you were on earth. Because everyone, everyone was quoting Borat in middle school, in high school, in college, and, like, even beyond. Like, people even, still I, would, I was in the workplace by then, and people were quoting yeah. in the offices. Every yeah. fucking day, people are talking about this movie. They're joking about it. Like, it is so culturally, like, a landmark in comedy and just movies in general that I think like it needs to be I'm so shocked I got it this low but like it is I, I, I'm so pumped I'm able to get this with my fifth pick because I think it's it's just such an insanely huge and monumental movie just again from American cultural perspective very nice yeah see dude <laughs> you didn't know that in high school I was a uh, you loser well, you're to come dork. out dork uh, 2008 I think 2006 see, yeah I thought it was even earlier yeah. yeah I thought it was even earlier it was yeah. it was right when I was or like Young in high school. Middle school for me. You yeah. didn't. If you didn't know fucking Borat jokes, you were you were a loser. The biggest loser on earth. Yeah, uh, it was like my first one of my first years in a real office. But people, even in the office, like middle aged people, were like quoting it and yeah. stuff. Like it, it just had a, this huge effect. And then I don't know if I've ever heard a theater laugh so much, dude. Oh my! Like God. I saw the theaters. I mean, people were like couldn't like breathe. They were oh, laughing yeah. so hard at Borat. I watched it recently. I don't think it ages particularly well. It does seem it. It just. It, I don't know if it works now as well as it did when it came out, mm-hmm. for me at least. Um, Definitely it, a tougher age than the rest of these comedies, but just yeah. like pure, I think. But when you see it for the first time, that first time, you, you, you're crying your off heart. My mom had to bring, bring me and my friends to the theater to watch it because we were like, right. I don't even know, like 13, 12 or whatever. But like it was bad. Uh, but yeah, Borat off the board. I fucking love it. What, what's up, Vanilla Face? Like everybody just doing like a million different lines on that movie every day. Uh, Jeff, wizard sleeve. I'm going to leave a lot on the board here for me. Uh, like, I almost picked Up in the Air. I'm obsessed with yeah, Up in the Air. Very I love that movie. Um, but I'll pick The Wrestler. Yeah, great movie. Uh, the Wrestler, that's probably top five performance of the decade, too, I think. Uh, Mickey Rourke's so good. Uh, talk about a, a, a cry movie. Emotional movie. One of the best sports movies ever made. Uh, wrestler is fucking amazing that i that year i think that was 08 as well uh um, yeah but those like two three years is when i became like a movie person okay wrestler is up there with movies like if i had like 10 movies that i saw 08 is probably the year that like i became a movie and like, how old were you then i was a uh oh eight oh nine i was a 2008 i was i was 27 i was a junior in high school I think when this movie came out. Okay, yeah. So that's, that's just like me. Like Pulp Fiction came out as a sophomore yeah. in high school, and that's when I became a movie guy. I think that age is when it mm-hmm. gets you. Where you you start to appreciate great writing and yes. acting, and and so if I said like ten movies that that's not my ten favorite movies of all time, but like that kind of changed me as I'm like a movie goer. Right, wrestler be up there. Um, there's a bunch I left that I I hate to leave because my favorite movie of that year I didn't even pick. Mm. I, uh, I, 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 my I, I, best of the year, but I'm trying to build a good team here. We'll get the. I'm not. We'll do the honorable mentions uh, <laughs> after Gucci gets his pick in. Trying to get back to the list, but um, 
This one, I, I would have taken it 1-1 if I didn't know that you guys wouldn't pick it. Going to go Walk Hard. It's one of my four favorite Fuck. movies of all time. Nice. I fucking love Walk Hard. Uh, that's a movie that's aged very well for me. Very I like it much well. more every time I watch it. Yeah, like, it's not only the comedy, which I think just works perfectly, like, playing off the musical biopics. Like, they really do just nail the formula, like, in terms of parodying it. The music is fucking out of this world very fantastic. Good. Like, it should have been nominated, I think. Like, it's really good original music. John C. Riley is one of the more versatile actors I think we have. Yes. Like he is You don't want any part of this <laughs> shit. I mean, yeah, so many great running gags in that mm. in that movie. His number of kids continues to grow. <laughs> <laughs> to the different drugs he's trying. John C. Riley might be the most versatile actor ever. He's so good, dude. I mean, Everything. I, who does slapstick comedies and then can do these dramas? Yeah, and do an insane drama. And like the his like you go through his filmography, it's insane. It's like it's schizophrenic. wild. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's schizophrenic. Literally, yeah. It's so fucking funny though. That's another one I could watch it any day of the week. God, what's her face? Margot Martindale. Yeah, perfect yeah, as his yeah. mom. Oh my gosh. All right, so here are our teams. Um, Clemmer has The Dark Knight, Role Models, Munich, The Hangover, Pursuit of Happiness. I Have No Country for Old Men, Iron Man, uh, In Bruges, There Will Be Blood in Borat. Jeff has The Departed, Casino Royale, Tropic Thunder, Step Brothers, and The Wrestler. Gooch has uh, Superbad, Inglorious Bastards, Hot Rod, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and Walk Hard. I'm so fucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I, th- I feel like we all have our own um, uh, honorable mentions. I think my biggest would be like Hot Fuzz, would be up there for yeah. me. Hot Fuzz, I think, is hysterical. That was my next off. But that's one that loses me in a vote off in a bracket. Uh, History of Violence, Children, Children of Men yeah. makes me cry every time I watch. Children of Men was on mine. Yeah, yeah. I just... History of Violence so good. Eastern Promises. I know. I think we talked about that yeah. before. Uh, History of Violence is fantastic. So good. One of my favorites. And then a bunch of Korean movies too, like like uh, Mothers on there. Mother uh, for sure. A couple other ones too. Top one I didn't pick was Slumdog Millionaire. I oh, love yeah. yep. Slumdog. Oh. Why? Why don't you love Slumdog Millionaire? That movie kind of stinks. Why? I don't know. What? I don't know. I don't. I doesn't. That doesn't. Doesn't work for me. Jai Ho. What doesn't work? The great music. <laughs> No, it's just it's a nice uh, story. I feel it's too. I don't say cliche because it is unique. It's, but it's it's it's, it's too predictable or too. It's definitely fucking. It's just something corny about it. And I, I know corny, I picked Pursuit of Happiness. Movie. And I know you. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 you yeah, yeah like what the, the fuck is this? <laughs> There's some the Pursuit of Happiness. You're gonna call Slumdog corny? Yeah. yeah. It's corny. I know. It's cor- I know. I'm saying the same about Pursuit of Happiness. I, I acknowledge it's corny. Pursuit of Happiness just hits. The other father's son stuff. That's I, always I, a hit. I it. would argue outside of Danny Boyle and Dev Patel, I might be the biggest Slumdog Millionaire fan in the world. <laughs> yeah. I love Slumdog Millionaire. Love it. General but some of the other ones. Wrestler. Uh, Frost Nixon. Love Frost Nixon. Very good movie. The Prestige. Very the good. Again, prestige. I'm a big, I'm a big Watergate like Nixon there. Like, I love stuff like that. Yeah. Frost Nixon, I think, is also a very funny movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the funniest, one of the funnier in a drama lines is when uh, Sam Rockwell's character, he's talking to Oliver Platt's character when he's going to meet Nixon. He goes, "You're going to shake his hand." I'm not going to shake his hand. He goes, he goes, he goes after what he, what this criminal's done. And he like goes a whole rant and he goes, hey, "How you doing?" He, he shakes his hand. He's like, "Wow." He goes, "That must have been devastating." He's like, oh, "Fuck you." <laughs> it's a really good, uh, really good one there. Uh, up in the air, like I mentioned, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I was uh, yeah, yeah, tough not that to take that. I love that movie. Do you not? I don't like cartoons. <laughs> right. I don't like cartoons. It's not a cartoon. Yeah. You know, oh, sorry. Whatever. It, it's not a cartoon. It is a cartoon. Have some res- Stop. <laughs> no, no, it's have cartoon. some res- ha- respect. Respect the fucking medium. It was it's better than cartoon. Isle of Dogs. Stop, stop that trash. Uh, respect the medium. Yeah, it's better than Isle of Dogs. Uh, Zodiac. I love you. Yeah, man. I'm actually Pepper. very shocked that that. Yeah. Didn't uh, I love drafted. you, man. There's a comedy that mm-hmm. we did not pick, which very I, I, I love you, man. Is very real, very cool. I love you, man. Is is up there? I think with I think I love you, man. Is disrespected that it doesn't that get be. enough love because it's very quotable. Was that oh nine? Jobin, yeah. Like there's yeah. a lot of very funny things from. Do you think there was just so many great comedies in he that like oh four to oh yeah. seven? A few. Of, Do you think a, we were just like exhausted by dude, like maybe it was too much funny? Rob I actually Bell. think it was because the same thing happened to Role Models where it comes out in like, what, yep. 2010? Bad spot. And yeah. it's just no, it like, oh, nine. Yeah, oh, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nine. Yeah. And There's a good Barry Jenkins movie that many people haven't seen called Medicine of Melancholy, mm. which just got a Criterion yeah. release. Oh, wow. Okay. It's his first movie. Rob Hubell yeah. in I Love You, Man, with like the, he's like, you see that? You're pissing oh, on my face. <laughs> that, 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 that legitimately is one of, okay, if I, if I did a top 10 favorite 20 2000s comedy lines, mm-hmm. Rob Hubble's line for, of, did, did you, I'm trying to quote it right. He's like, he's like, he's like, you see that bus bench ad? You know who did that? 
M. Night Shyamalan, director of the film. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that director of the so village. Fun. Everything with him, like <laughs> him talking about like all his ads and everything. I love you, man, is definitely, you're right. It gets lost in the shuffle. There are so many good one-liners in that movie. Yep. Fuck, man. Even him just like, like Rob's even was my best friend. Them playing golf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Hank, Hank Mardukas. Mardukas. Hank yeah. Mardukas is, I love you, man, is, I think, disrespected. We just disrespect. Nobody picked it. Yeah, true. I, but I, I think when you break down like the little jokes and that, like Hank Mardukas is one of the funniest running gags. That's the other thing, too. There just aren't funny <laughs> running gags in movies these days. Like, they're no. just. The, aren't comedies these days. Mm-hmm. Right. But I'm saying like, but even in them, there aren't, there's not that attention to detail that you could appreciate that you could in those. Uh, if I love you, man is wait, which one? Fuck. Which movie has, um, the Tom Skerritt reference? Oh yeah. Fuck that. I shit. It was one of those period movies. Um, it's with what's his face from, uh, Ted. Is it Ted? Oh, Ted. That's yeah. Ted. Ted, Ted, see, Ted was funny too, though. Ted was very, He's very funny. funny. Ted's yeah. very funny. Yeah, Tom, his, <laughs> my buddy, my my good friend, Tom Scarrett. Tom <laughs> Scarrett, dude, uh, that Joel McHale character in general was very funny. I hope you get Lou Der- Gehrig's disease. It's <laughs> yeah. very good. Yeah. It's we didn't say 40 year old version. 40 year old version, is, yeah, um, that's up there too. Did Cinderella Man, Michael Clayton, which I love. I do like Michael Clayton. Apocalypto, uh, I love Good Night and Good Luck, I like. Gone Baby Gone. Mike, Michael Clayton fascinates me yeah. because when you hear other screenwriters talk about it, they talk about it like it's the holy grail. Like they act like that Michael Clayton script is like one of the best scripts ever. It's a made. fantastic script. Uh, it's, Watchmen it's up there. I, I like Watchmen. Watchmen so director a lot. cut. Observe uh, and report. Observe I and report. love observe and report. There, uh, yeah, I, I, mm, I, yeah. I'm very not, funny. I'm not, I, observe and report. I don't. I don't. I don't lift observe and report up there. Oh. Uh, we forgot one. Um, Wedding called? Crashers? Sunshine I'd have up there. Wedding Crashers didn't Sunshine. get drafted. People will be mad about that, I think. No, Wedding what's, crashers, yeah. what's not observing report? What's the really... Paul Bart? There's another one that, yeah. Foot this the, way? The sister movie to that? Yeah, what's oh, the sister? Oh, that's Paul Bart. No, yeah, Paul Bart and Observing Report came out like months apart. No, I think there is a... there's a Another mall movie? Observing Report's fantastic. It's it's. Just, I mean, I just love the mood swings in it. It's so dark. It's so they drop him off with a uh, uh, Danny McBride's character is also very funny. Am I thinking of the watch. Maybe it is Observing Report. Then did we do a, an Observing Report like rewatch? We did, I believe. I remember we did, did something you? with it. Oh, I, I would have. Yeah. Wait, wait. We did. We did just mention one that I. Fuck. What movie? Why don't you just set a movie that I just wanted to talk about for a second? Sunshine. I doubt it. No, I love fuck, Sunshine. Clever. You just said rock a and roller. Uh. Uh, foot fist way uh, foot fist way yeah. foot fist way is very another funny. one that is yeah. very foot fist way is is not for everyone either it's a much s- subtler movie along the lines like a hot rod um and like kind of dumb but the uh, foot fist way so we used to rent movies from blockbuster we'd go rent like dumb comedies sometimes they'd be funny sometimes they wouldn't be sometimes they'd be dog shit foot fist way when when he kicks the the old lady when that guy kicks the old lady is Probably the hardest I've ever laughed watching a movie. So it's sudden. so shocking. Yeah, so sudden. I, I, I like choked. I was laughing so hard. That's Don't. funny. I saw that movie years ago. I need to rewatch it because those guys are great. Vice Principals, like the mm-hmm. show on HBO, same, yeah. same guys. That Dude, show you gotta is watch, so uh, good. Righteous Gemstones. I know. I still haven't so seen yeah, it. Yeah, Gemstones is a, is, a so mu- Gemstones is a must watch. You didn't get married by a legacy character? <laughs> like who? Like, I don't know, Mickey? Fuck Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Gemstones is very good. <laughs> Ooh, here, are, here are some of my some of my misses. I'm looking through like the first Star Trek. I legitimately. Oh yeah, that almost yeah. made my list. That's a yes, very that, good movie. Very that, good. That's one where he, I don't know how it got lost to the annals of time, but nobody talks about that movie. It's the it's, third it's one fucking fantastic. Yeah. I mind the third one, second one, the though. Justin Lin one. Yeah, Justin Lin did the third one, right? The like, most recent yeah. one was actually probably the best since the first one. I think because the, uh, whatever was the like, one with Idris sh- Elba, right? Yeah, that's the third one. Right. I don't think that's the fourth one. I don't think there were three. Are there four of them? I, I liked all three. I'm with Clemmer. Wait, I think, wait, I think wait, are there three or four? I think there were three. There's three, There's three. right? Right. The but now the, the, the more you say one, it, though, the more I think end. there is another one. No. In the Darkness was a massive letdown because it yes. was Cumberbatch. It was Khan. Right. Remember, it was the, the fake advertising to make you think it wasn't Khan. Yeah, it is three. Beyond Star Trek Beyond, Beyond was, was yeah, yeah, Beyond was fun. I like yeah. they, they had a good time with it. Yeah. Into Darkness, not as much. Other ones, Zombieland. 
Well, yeah, almost made my list. Fantastic movie. movie. V for Vendetta. I don't know how about how you guys that feel about that. Like I, I, I love that movie. Like that's a movie I watched in high school, and then I don't think I ever watched I, it. I, I fucking love that movie. Inside Man would be up there for me. I what was love the hold Inside on? Let's, Man. Let's, let's it's great. Begins. I, I actually love Batman Begins. I think Batman Begins. I think it's much closer to the Dark Knight than people are willing to say. People sleep on Begins. It's a very good movie. Uh, Assassination of Jesse James. Mm. Yeah, uh, back beautiful when, movie. Yeah, back when Dominic could make good movies. Yeah, Ip Man. Oh yeah. It man, one of the great martial arts movies. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. I do love Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. I like that a lot. That's a good movie. Yeah. I mean, this is just a, I don't know. Maybe mm. it's like because we were at that age where you just become very receptive to the movies and music you're watching. But I really do think this is just a very it, strong era for movies. All like, sorts of bad movies. Meet the Spartans, Disaster oh, man, Movie, yeah. Epic Movie, Transylvania. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy, Health Inspector. Delta Farce. Delta Santa. Farce, baby. <laughs> Son of the Mask. Wicker Man. Yeah, the, Delta Farce. White Out. The oh, Love Guru. Kate Beckinsale. Terrible. Movie. Was The Happening? The Happening is during this draft. The Happening would be so. one of the worst we've ever seen in the theater. The ha- Happening is one of the worst we've oh, ever seen in my The life. Dragon yeah. Ball movie, The Dragon Ball Evolution with Justin Chatwin. Oh, Garfield, so The bad. Tale of Two Kitty, superhero movie. These are all, this is the parody era. Yeah. yeah. Superhero movie. Van Wilder, the, Raj of, the Rise of Taj. Rise of Taj. Rise of Taj. <laughs> yeah. Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo. Let's see. What else we got? Wait until you say a bad one that I actually like. Sorority Row. <laughs> Let's go to prison. I remember that one. There's a bad fucking American movies. Pie Beta House. Bewitched with Will good. Ferrell. <laughs> oh, yeah. dude. Oh, that no. Bad. That movie bad had hype, movie. too. I remember that movie. Yeah, like Paul Kidman, right? Yeah. Wild Hawks is probably around here too. Although I don't. Bangkok despise. Dangerous with Nick Cage. Yeah. Very Me- bad. Oh, Meet Dave. How did we miss that? Norbit. I bet you like Norbit. Oh, my oh it's all God. I can I bet you got a guilty <laughs> didn't pleasure. They, didn't they run? I want to say they, was Norbit come out the same time as uh, Dream Girls. So, like, oh, Eddie so Murphy. A great role and a shit role. Yeah, <laughs> right. What's that might have been Norbit ad during the Oscars or something like that? Was... Stan Helsing. Oh, The Grudge 2. <laughs> the G-Force. Halloween's from Rob Zombie. Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Squeakle. That was a bad one. Yeah, those yeah. weren't really Babylon good. Babylon AD. Though. Oh, that was that was a big letdown for me. I thought that was going to be great. G Force. The Mr. Gerbils movie. Yeah, I, I missed Woodcock. that one. <laughs> there's, there's some bad. Yeah, stingers. there's some bad fucking movies. I love here. you, Beth Cooper. I hate that movie. Step Up Two came out pretty good. It really was the best and worst of Wahlberg, though, because you had The Departed, but then you also had The, the Happening at the same. The yeah. Happening is, is Happening is so bad. Oh, Electra, that stunk. The Hitman movie, that also was so bad. Holy shit. The number 23, that was one where I was like, how can they make a movie that bad with Jim Carrey? Whew, that was a rough one. But anyway, that's a, that's our draft. We'll be back next week with a new to- or on Monday Fast. with a new topic. Yeah, Tuesday with a new topic. God damn. One of those Fast days. is finally here. We got to record on yeah, Sunday, Fast too. X. The first of three. Of the trivia tournament. <laughs> yeah, with Fast X. I can't wait for you guys to watch it. I'm so excited to see what you think of it. Uh, thanks, Clement, for joining in. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. <laughs>